I got hit in the head with a shovel. <laughs> you got hit in the head with a shovel? How Great hard weapon. are we talking? Like, <sighs> just like a little like, yeah. boop, or? Because, because like, uh, boom! Great weapon, but if you hit it with the concave side, it's not that bad on your skull. Did we do a sound check? Oh yeah, we did. Okay. Wait, were you not paying attention? Oh, no. All right. I was waiting for you to get out of the shitter. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> I refuse to get out of the shitter, guys. It's my <laughs> Getting out of the shitter. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I've right, got the word right. rolling. I'm looking down this camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> man, this is more professional than we are. All right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Should we count it in? Should we give it a. Uh, I'll count it in. I'll count it in. All right. This is way more serious. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. all right. We're rolling quiet on set. All right. And we're live in five, four, three. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, <laughs> welcome back to another episode of the Trash Taste Podcast. I'm your host for this week, for the first time in a while, and with me are the boys, as usual. And we Thank have you. a guest. Introduce yourself. Ah, hello Trash Taste Podcast <laughs> listeners and video viewers. My name is Lady Beard. I'm thrilled to be here today on the Trash Taste Podcast. This <laughs> Jesus is Christ, Jesus Christ. This Normally is we have to like bring the energy to the guests. Yeah. And I, know, I feel like I'm being brought up. No, Lady <laughs> Beard wait. brought the energy, damn it. <laughs> Bloody hell, I came with all the energy you can handle. You won't be able to shut me up. That old lady at Denny's told us we had to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> we've that's we've that's never had that happen to us. That's right. how this started for viewers at home. Yeah. We had a, a pre-production meeting in Denny's and the old lady it's came very up generous and told way us, of wording yeah. Yeah, pre-production. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's we, just a lunch. Yeah. We, we, we ate lunch at Denny's before we did this. Yeah. And uh, the old lady who works at Denny's made a point of coming up to us to tell us that we were- No, no, she made a point of coming up to you. <laughs> I was gonna say, we're regulars though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We can't go back there yeah. now. We can't, I've ruined it for you. <laughs> they, they, they know our schedule. We go there and there's a guy who just knows the exact time and like the exact day that we come. Yeah. <laughs> When we, when we come early, he's like, oh, you, you're a bit early than usual. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. You're regulars. That's wonderful. Exactly. Yeah. Um, are we allowed to, am I allowed to say the, the general area of Japan, which the studio is in? No. No. Uh, okay. We're in Japan. Oh, yeah. We're in Japan. In the same general area that yeah, we're right in now, um, I actually have a reputation of ruining things for people because Why? I, um, well, so one of my best friends lives in this general area too. Yeah, right. And so it was a night when I went uh, to his house and um, we played this game where- <laughs> So, okay, so oh okay. <laughs> I'm scared now. We play this game when we went walking out, it's the middle of summertime, we're yeah. about two, three in the morning, we went out to do the mm -hmm. convenience store and the things you normally do. Mm -hmm. And we played this game of, you know, there's only certain institutions that are open at that time. Of right, day, right, right. Nice. So we made this game when we would go into the institution, you know, in Kid Japan, they have the little tray to put your money in when you pay for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. We made this game out, we go and we, you know, do whatever, buy our stuff at the convenience store. And then we would flip over the tray and see how they reacted. Because, because, because a, a lot of people in Japan, people working in the service industry, can't handle that. Right. <laughs> it, blew, it blew minds, you see. Right. I remember saying to the guy at the convenience store, it was, it was a bit, it was, it was probably a bit nasty because my friend is this huge bodybuilder guy. Right, right, so right. I'm, and I'm a pro wrestler. So we're there and the dude behind the convenience, it's 3 a.m. There's two <laughs> foreigners. There's no other humans for miles around. And he's this tiny little dude. And I'm like, but what would you do, sir, if I did this? And I flipped the tray. <laughs> I just what, waited. Whilst he was looking, this like you were maintaining eye contact. This poor man freaked out. He freaked out. He'll ne he will never <laughs> talk to a foreigner ever again. Anyway, but then the game became: you would run into an institution, you'd flip the tray and run out, and you'd see what you'd see what would happen. So you're basically just ding dong dashing. Yeah. yeah. Well, it means now my friend can't go to Sutaya anymore. Well, because of, <laughs> because, we because he's known as that, that giant dude the who giant flips trays over. Flips like, trays. You know the uh, Ar Arnold's uh, Schwarzenegger meme, the one where he's running with his shirt off. <laughs> 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 running the to the restaurant to flip over the table. <laughs> <laughs> running out. Okay, so but we, first we, of all, I think there's gonna be a lot of confusion. <laughs> yeah. we, we we just <laughs> jumped yeah, right yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. let's uh, yeah. let's let's you, let's dial it back a bit. Let's 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 go back a bit. Do you want to introduce yourself to audiences who don't know? What do you do? What do you do? Why are you wearing? Because to someone who doesn't, because to someone who doesn't know who Ladybeard is. They're probably just thinking, who is this white guy in a dress? Who's this random Aussie who just joined the Trash Days podcast? I'll be honest, I don't know anything. I want to come into this blind. I wanted to hear and meet you and experience everything. So I know absolutely nothing about you. I'm Connor's biggest fan. As Connor has made me so happy in the short time I've known him. Let me introduce myself. I'll do Watch this. I'll do it like we're like we're on TV. This is channel seven. Are you ready? Okay, go for it. 
My name's Ladybeard. I'm a heavy metal singer and pro wrestler from Australia, currently based in Japan. Today, I'm thrilled to be talking to my friends. This is the quietest you've been. It's very <laughs> creepy. I, this is what the, quiet, creepy? This is the yeah. quietest you've been in a long time. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it, that was like Australian like news documentary narration yeah. voice. It was, yeah. it was yeah. wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, but I didn't go up at the end of my sentence the way I potentially should have. Like every Australian to does. To appear in Australian media. Oh We're God. in Japan, so there's no need to talk about <laughs> the wonderful nation of Australia from which uh, both Joseph and I hail. We can, we, can, yeah. we can get to that though, we can get okay. to that. So, get to that. so how, how um, does this come to be? What is this? So, like, so yeah. um, uh, I am a, a heavy metal singer and a pro wrestler. Wait, which one were you first? Dresser. I was first a cross dresser. Oh, really? And then oh. became a cross dressing pro wrestler. Right. And then became a cross dressing wrestling heavy metal. Yeah, what, what, what is what is the journey? I feel, like, I feel like you're saying these steps so casually. I'm trying to break these down. That's like that's like someone being like, I was. Uh, a straight man, and then I was a straight man who became an astrophysicist, and then I became a straight man who does astrophysicist and does gardening every now. I, I feel uh, like- uh, Are you not those things? Yes. I thought that's what this was. Yeah. I feel like there's a story that gets for us from point A to point B, but yeah. I'm just not seeing it. So I, okay. I so used wait. to live in yeah. uh, the city of Hong Kong, and I was an actor and a voice actor and a pro- Whoa, 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 whoa. How did you, you get to Hong Kong? No, 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 no
performer mm. and stuntman. So really yeah. pro wrestling is a small skip. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. always interested in wrestling when I was younger, but um, it, just due to where I lived in Adelaide and where the wrestling gyms were, they mm. were miles away. So I never had the chance to actually right, do right, it. Right, Did you watch like WWE and stuff yeah. like that? Yeah. yeah, but there wasn't, uh, when I was at the age to watch all that, it wasn't mm. on TV very readily in, in Adelaide. Mm. It was on like 1.30 in the morning yeah, on yeah, a yeah. Thursday. Yeah. So it's like, you know, when well, I was, only the uh, naughty kids stayed right. up to watch when that. I was up studying for my, like, yeah. um, I would, yeah, catch some WWE sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm, um, you're of a different generation than I, I yes. think, without giving up too many things. So yeah, the yeah. wrestlers you watched are probably different from the ones I watched. I mean, to be frank, I didn't really watch a whole you lot of wrestling. wrestling. You yeah. assume I watched wrestling yeah. before, right? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 okay, my, my wrestling knowledge of like back, you know, when I was like in teenage years, mm. yeah. all of it comes from all the WWE games that my neighbor okay. used to have. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. like, you know, be like, Back then, when it was, I think it was still SmackDown versus Raw, yes. right? Like that kind of like level. So, okay, so it's like good. you know, it's like very. I, I wouldn't call myself a wrestling but fan. But that's around the time when I was getting access to this one thirty in the morning. Right, 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 well. right. But you had to have Foxtel to be able to watch the damn wrestling. I didn't have Foxtel. Yeah, Foxtel is like uh, it's like cable, like cable, like Sky. Okay, right, right, right. That's what I like. Yeah, like, like Sky. Yeah, 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 yeah basically. basically. Yeah, but then Australia, Sky is that conservative news network. <laughs> so I don't say Sky because it's a very different thing in Australia. Is it? I don't even know that. No. Too many people use the same words for their media outlets. <laughs> so wait, okay. So then I want to know then if that's the case. Okay, so you're like, so okay, so you're like into wrestling, and you're like, okay, it's just a logical, you know, progress to what? go into wrestling. Yeah. So then, so like, how do you? Okay, how, I've always wondered because I knew I know a few people who like used to be pro wrestlers or currently do pro wrestling. Okay. How do you even start to get into an industry like that? Well, you go in, you go to wrestling school. So right. you go to a wrestling gym and yeah. you'll do a tryout to see whether or not they will train you. Right. Mm -hmm. And if they accept you, then they accept you and they start training you. Right, what right, do they right. look for? What's like what's like the audition process? Well, you need to have, um, you know, physically, you need to be able to handle the physical stuff. Yeah. Mm. And then, you know, from a, um, I guess, a presentation of performance perspective, you need yeah. to have um, show, some man. level of aptitude in that. Have some you don't showmanship. Need, don't mm. Yeah, you don't necessarily need to be trained in anything already, but if you're super shy and you can't handle being in front of an audience, it's not yeah. gonna work out great. Because right, right. wrestling is generally speaking about larger than life characters. Yeah, 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 right. and men yeah. in dresses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or men in dresses. <laughs> That's right. So then how did you go from that to moving to Japan then? So, okay, so uh, financial crisis, uh, all the work's gone. Um, but around that time I started wrestling in Hong Kong because there was a mm. gym that was accessible to me for the first time. Mm -hmm. Right. Started wrestling, um, started training a month later. I caught on fairly quickly because the techniques are not that different from stunts. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. right. A month later had my first match. And so Jesus. we're getting ready. For, yeah, that's too fast. Yeah. yeah. Anyone who's training wrestling, <laughs> yeah. a month is too fast. I feel a month is too from, fast for any training. <laughs> to go from your first body slam to doing it in front of people. That's right, very right. fast. So, so is, when, when you say first wrestling match, is this like an, a whole coordinated, This you do this, I do this kind of thing, or is it literally just you just like how, how does that work? I have no idea. Um, well, so in wrestling, it's uh, okay. So there's like a system, right? Right. right. Once you learn the system, mm. then you can work. I see. Okay. So if I know what I'm doing, if you, I'm trained to the system and you're trained to the system, you can, we right. can never have like met before. Read the, read but the we room. can, we can, we know the you system. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Sorry, my man. It's all right. It's all right, Connor. I, I don't mind. Not, I don't, right. I don't know. Because you know, with no, no, because I, I wanted to know yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. With, you know, I mean, you know, because it's it's an act, but it, you know, it's not an act, mm. right? But you, I don't, Are I don't you know. Telling me that wrestling is oh fake, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Connor McGregor, right? Here. <laughs> <laughs> it's an MMA. It's the real thing. <laughs> Connor McGregor, all oh, top of the morning to you. I thought this was the Joe Rogan experience. This Joe is not the Joe. Connor, what's going on? It's a podcast. <laughs> I was lying too. <laughs> Oh my God. What is happening? What is happening? <laughs> I didn't want I'm to I'm so confused you. right now. Conor Conor. McGregor, Conor, Conor. I'm losing I, my mind already. I, I am Conor, I'm Conor's largest fan. If your last name's not McGregor, what's your, what should I call you by your last name? Lady Beat is literally <laughs> in every- <laughs> <laughs> Lady Beard is in like, and I, and I say this in the nicest way possible, is one of the hardest people to work with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh no. Well, I, like, like I just said, like I literally just said, this man is like, 
fucking oh, 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 already set. destroying the set within Jesus what, Christ. 15 minutes of recording. <laughs> my legs! My legs! Yeah, they can't walk correctly. <laughs> All right, let's let's cut. <laughs> Sorry. So what were we talking about before that calamity? Wrestling. wrestling. We're talking about <laughs> wrestling. How it works. And then of course you were yeah. saying about, you know, you had one month of training before your first- Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. then so then we're there and we're discussing before this match. Okay, so what do you want your character to be? Your gimmick, mm, as yeah. it's referred to a pro wrestling. Mm. And um, uh, I have a long history uh, in cross-dressing. Yeah, we? yeah. So can we talk about that? Oh yes, yeah, we, 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 can, we completely it. missed that. Yeah, I completely yeah. forgot. <laughs> yeah. So how, how did that come to be? So when I was fourteen, mm. a friend of mine had a school uniform birthday party, and I thought, Wait, as what's, as, what's as a school you... uniform birthday party? <laughs> have you never been to a party in your life? No, but like, what do you mean? That was like nasty. school oh, uniform. Didn't mean to, that was what's nasty. So special didn't about to... a... Cut that. Cut the lady being aggression. <laughs> I didn't mean to be aggression to Joey. I'm sorry, Joey. That's fine. I secretly love you. It's okay. I just, I just genuinely wanted to know what a school uniform birthday party. What? What is that? School uniform birthday party <laughs> is a birthday party to which in, in, everybody when you're school wears yeah. school uniform. Isn't that just okay. like a normal so, party? Isn't that just yeah. like an after school it's, party? Yeah. Yeah, but you don't go after school. It's like on the weekend or whatever. Well, like, okay, okay, what I want to know is why you wanted, want to choose to wear a school uniform to go to a party. Because mm. it's my friend's birthday and she can do whatever she wants. It's her, <laughs> it's her party. She can cry if she wants to. You would I, cry too if it happened to you. Okay, okay. So you okay. went to a school uniform birthday party. I went to a school uniform birthday party. And yeah. you know, I saw all my mates went wearing what we wore to school. Mm. So wearing the trousers and the blazer mm. and the shirt and everything. Yep, yep. And I was like, it'd be really funny if I wore my big sister's school dress. Right, so okay. I did. And it was a hit amongst the 14 year olds. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be, yeah, that'd be hilarious. Yeah. yeah, it was hilarious, right? Yeah. It was, it, yeah. And so um, then what happened is I started them wearing that particular school dress to various other non-school uniform parties right. and rock and roll shows and things. And what happens is uh, I noticed that this is back in the nineties. Yes, yeah, so it's a different time mm -hmm. from now. Um, as a man in a dress, young man in a dress, I would walk into the room and the energy of the room would lift straight away. Mm, right. So you know how at the start of every party, there's like that two hours of faffing around when everyone's not really loose and everyone's yeah, going yeah, up to, yeah. that would just disappear. Yeah, dude true, in a dress true. walk in and everyone goes, oh, dude in a dress! <laughs> <laughs> the party's on straight away, right? Right, right. Woo! It's, you know, 6 p.m. Woo! So, so you were like the party starter at like every starter. party. Yeah. yeah, it was great. I can so, see that. Yeah. I mean, so that's, then, that's kind of what I do on my YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah, right? This yeah. is fun, I don't know, it's freeing, you know? You feel like when you're the clown, Clown, you can do anything. You know what I mean. Uh, 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 wait, you, what you do? What you're you, a cross dressing on your YouTube channel? I've, I've done a lot of cross dressing on my YouTube channel. Oh, I, I guess. Oh, good. It's, yeah. it's quite fun. I mean, I feel like when you're when you know you're the butt of the joke, mm. it's so can like I don't know. It's so like freeing. It's so control like because you feel like you're the one in control. Almost. Yeah, that's uh, that's not how I felt it. For me, it was not butt of the joke. But I yeah. appreciate what yeah, you're yeah, saying, yeah, though. Yeah. I appreciate what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but definitely when you're the object of attention. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah what yeah. I found. <laughs> See, it's become a different conversation recently because mm. the whole transgender movement mm, is yeah. happening. Yeah, so yeah. now it's a different conversation from what it was when I started. Right. But for me, it was a case of, I was more successful at life mm. when wearing a dress than when wearing pants. Yeah. Right. Mm. Which is an interesting thing really, because a lot of transgender people would have the opposite experience. Or they would right. they yeah, say they right, wanted right. to express themselves by wearing dresses well, or whatever, I, I, and then they felt they couldn't. Mm. But for me, I was dressed like a dude and it was like, I and then I put on a dress and everyone's like, woo! So I mm. think I think there's a lot of insecurity out there with guys where yeah. like, if you say it's a joke, it's hilarious. But if you're like, no, I like this. They're like, oh, I don't know how to feel about that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Like, right. There is yeah. some of that. Which I mean, I mean, just talking to you now, you definitely bring the energy wherever well, you, you go. So I, I think, think I, I, think, I, I feel like I played the guards. part into it. Yeah, I, thank you guards. It's so good, man. I don't think the dress stay is like this for the rest for of the, the energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel it's like the energy was there before the <laughs> skirt yeah, came yeah. on, you know? But, but sort of on, on like on what you just said. Yeah. Yeah, but I turn up in this and I'm all energetic. And everybody goes, well, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But why don't I just turn up in pants and old lady in Denny's tells me to shut up. You know what I'm saying? Right? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? I mean, I, I am curious. I, 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 think, I think the outfit wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. Told, I think she was going to tell you to shut the yeah. fuck up. Yeah. I am curious. In the country of noise complaints, how many noise, <laughs> just how many noise complaints have you got on Oh, here? dear me, dear me. It's a nonstop stream of noise complaints. Just walking down the street. Udasai, Udasai. She's a kakulasai. Just yeah, constantly. Yeah. Constantly. How do you not like, I don't know. Because I guess, you know, you had that like voice acting experience, right? Okay. So I guess like the whole like, you know, using your voice and being loud and all of that is just like kind of ingrained into you almost. I don't know, I, <laughs> I just saved that shit. What do you mean? Oh really? That's, yeah. that's optional. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but it's, I think it's more just a 
personality personality trait, trait. Right. So, yeah and on top of that i'm a younger sibling so i had to do something to get some damn attention to <laughs> <laughs> look at me frankly, frankly. <laughs> So where am I in this story? Yeah, so, okay, so uh, I was a cra casual cross-dresser. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then when I moved to Hong Kong, I started cross-dressing in the same capacity. So just going out to rock and roll shows and things in a dress. Mm. Right. Because Hong Kong's such a conservative society. Yep. That, yo, if I lifted the energy in Australia, in Hong Kong, I really <laughs> yeah, lifted yeah, the energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would walk in, it was just, ah! People <laughs> just lost their minds. You're like, you're the funniest person I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> they, they went bonkers for it. <laughs> so I'm like, mm, damn. So. So there we are, and we're um, you know, figuring out characters for the first wrestling match. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every other right, wrestler, yeah. every yeah. other wrestler in Hong Kong, their gimmick was, "I am a wrestler." Right, right. <laughs> right. So yeah. I'm like, like nothing interesting at yeah, all. Yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, he's a wrestler. Yeah. Like, is that all? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I'm like, um, so what are you I'm good at? I wrestle. <laughs> what yeah. is your name? Wrestler. <laughs> the wrestler. <laughs> the wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm like, I'm gonna uh, wear a dress and I'm gonna be called Ladybeard. Right. Okay. And so all the other wrestlers were like, okay. And they were yeah. weird, weird about it, right? Yeah. Right. First match I go in there overnight, most popular wrestler in Hong Kong. Damn. Really? Cause Damn. I was the only one who had a character. Try, right. Because everyone else was a wrestler, the same as the other 20 wrestlers they'd just seen come out before him. Mm, right? mm. So what yeah. I wanted to know, how is like, it, I assume this is like the amateur wrestling scene. How did they, how did they introduce new wrestlers? Um, like what's the process for that? Well, uh, okay. So like I say, you go through, you, you do a, a tryout and then right. they agree to train you, you start training. Mm. Okay. And then when you get, when you're kind of released publicly, as in when you're debuted, mm. yeah. uh, they'll find a way to debut you. So normally you do it with something public, like a wrestling show right. or like a video segment or something like that. Mm. Yeah. And um, they'll just like, whoever you are in the ring and however you're going to fit into the company and the stories and so forth, they'll just find a way that works to right, introduce right, your character. Right, right. So let's right. say for instance, right now, let's say we've been training Gant and uh, for the past year and Gant's now a skilled young pro wrestler. As you can and see by my physique right here. You can see Gant's been smacking at the gym on a daily basis. So, um, okay, so what's, what's let's make a gimmick for you real quick. You are the, um, the you're the, the Thai elephant God. So, okay, here's the Thai elephant God and we've decided and currently uh, Joey, who is the um, uh, slightly colorful head, Luchador. <laughs> he's, 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 okay. he's, he's in a feud with a Connor, um, uh, the Welsh Despair. So okay, okay. you two are feuding. Just, just being Welsh. You two are feuding. Yeah. Why does the Welsh you, Despair sound so cool? Right. <laughs> I was trying to think of what that started with W, but I couldn't think of it in two I'm seconds. the multicolored luchador. <laughs> <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> what gimmick what would you like to be? Anything else would be fine. Really? <laughs> Other than what's your gimmick? I have interesting colored hair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cool, so thanks. Is, 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 is that the standard of Hong Kong? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That didn't even have interesting colored hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no, that sounded rude. Okay, so. so, so Okay, so, okay, so, okay, so my yeah, wrestling yeah. In Hong Kong. anyway, okay, so let's say you guys are feuding. Mm -hmm, right. um, we'll find some kind of angle in which during your story, uh, for some reason, <laughs> the Thai elephant god is paying huge homage to the uh, multicolored uh, luchador. Yeah, right. And to that end, when you guys are in a match, Joey will hit his finisher and he'll like cover Connor and it'll be one, two, and then the lights will go off and they'll come on and riding down the ramp on an elephant is the Thai elephant god. Right. To let right. everybody know that the match is not going to end like this. Right, right. Or just any damn way you want to do it. This right. is one of the beautiful things mm. about wrestling. There's a lot of potential for creativity and yeah. so forth. So. so did you get to like, say for instance, like the entry, right? Like I think from what I've heard, like each wrestler, they do they get to choose what song they enter with? Uh, yep, it, well, it depends on your company really. It's right, 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 right. But like you, <laughs> but like basically the wrestler, like every other time, like they get to choose yeah. how they want to enter. I, right? perso or, like, the, I personally got to, but right. of course you're limited by, you know, <coughs> what you're capable of doing. Also yeah. copyright, I imagine. Oh yeah, 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 true, yeah, true, true. That can be a problem if it's, uh, well, yeah, it can be a problem, but it's kind of like, if you're small time, you're often too, too small time. Right, yeah, if right, you're right. big time, they've got the rights cleared. So, okay. so what's, what's <laughs> like, say like for you, for example, like what's like your t pinnacle of entries that you remember? Because I've seen some, because recently Aki has been getting into WWE. Oh, oh right. okay. Which is like slightly worrying as well. Because <laughs> I'm like, good. is she going to be a WWE girlfriend? Good. I don't know about that. <laughs> but, she, but she was watching, good. we were watching uh, like, I think it was like the top 10, like WWE, like most memorable WWE entries. And right. the one that fucking killed me was one that John Cena did where 
<laughs> they literally somehow got a hundred John Cena lookalikes <laughs> to come out in this like, like just this fucking row of people. And they would part ways and create this like aisle. That's the most excellent yeah. thing. They, 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 they part ways and create this aisle. And That's then fantastic. the moment the fireworks went off, they all turned to each other and started doing this. That's fantastic. <laughs> and then John, the real John Cena comes out and he just runs through them all That's just doing fantastic. this. Fantastic. That's so, fantastic. Did you ever get to do something like that? Or? Uh, uh, well, let me tell you something, Joey. The budget that's been dedicated to Liam <laughs> is not the same as what has been dedicated to John Cena. Okay, friend. well then what, what, what would you say is like, yeah, this is like the peak of my entry. Of, of, of like a ring entrance? Of like a ring entrance. I don't know. I don't think I've done anything particularly special as a ring entrance. You don't really um, like- Off the top of my head. No, I don't think I've really done any. You just you just kind of show up. <laughs> get guys, guys. She's like, hey, I'm here. Hey, hey, get, get announced. You know, yeah. come out, get a big light on you. Yeah. Go around high fiving the audience. Yeah. Go into ring, but you got to remember when I come out, I've got pigtails in and a pink and white bikini. So just that is somewhat a statement. My true, friend. true. I don't need to do this, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's looking already. I want them to see me. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. All right, so you Ter did- Only terrible. Only jokes, terrible so. WWE jokes. <laughs> so, okay, so we established the cross-dressing thing. Yep. We've established the pro wrestling thing. Yeah. Yep. Metal singing, how did that come to be? So, um, so when I moved to Hong Kong, I started learning Cantonese because that's the language I speak there. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of the strategies I had for learning languages was I would get music in that language, which I'm sure you guys have probably gone through here with Japanese. Yeah. Yeah, Japanese not Connor from the look on his face, but <laughs> <laughs> you get music that you like in the language. Yeah. Yep. So. I started listening to uh, Cantonese pop songs. Right. Most of the music is pop. There's very little anything else in Hong oh, Kong. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening to these pop songs. Um, and my favorite numbers are Metalhead from mm. way back. Actually, my favorite songs, full stop, were always like metal covers of pop songs. Right, okay. right, right. So like, you know, metal covers of like Last Friday Night and Your yeah, yeah, yeah. Face and things yeah. like that. Because they're hilarious, right? Because yeah. you're so used to hearing Lady Gaga with, you know, carry my poker face. Yeah. And then you hear, carry my poker face. <laughs> to me, it's so funny, right? I think it's fantastic. <laughs> because it takes what you're used to and it subverts it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, to yeah, me, that's right. a thing of beauty. So mm. when I started listening to these Cantonese pop songs, I was like, these are really catchy songs. Who's done the metal covers? Turns out no one had. Right. And I was like, well, well someone we should, should do that. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> Free Fast real estate, isn't it? Three years later, um, I, uh, it was after the financial crisis, everything had been wiped out. I'm yeah. like, what am yeah. I gonna do? I was uh, going through one, like one of those exercises where you figure out your career and what you're gonna mm, do. And yeah. it's like, what are you passionate about? And I'm like, well, heavy metal and destroying things. Mm. So I'm like, okay, I wanna be a metal singer. And I was like, okay, specifically, I wanna sing metal covers of Cantonese pop songs because wow. I think they'll sound awesome. No yeah. one else has done it. I'm gonna goddamn do it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So I did, and then what I said was, okay, so I've already got this fan base organized with the wrestling. I'm gonna do this metal project mm. as Ladybeard, and I'm gonna bring that mm. fan base over. And okay. then I'm gonna try and do this amazing, interesting thing of working the pro wrestling world and the heavy metal world together mm. so that the storylines are interlocked and they flow back and forward between oh, them. This sounds wow. like you were like 15 years too early to TikTok. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like those uh, heavy metal covers would blow up on TikTok. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Also, yeah. Hearing you talk about the financial crisis, like this devastating thing is so bizarre because I was just so young. I was probably shitting myself and watching Finding Nemo. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> the thought of having an impact. Yeah, I mean, what, it was 2008, right? Yeah. Like, I was 14. I was, I was in university. So oh, I was probably like 12 or something. I'm 24. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smookaroonie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean like, you yeah, know, I, I, think I, I, was like, I think I was 11 then. Yeah, cause I had yeah. heard like from my parents, know, my parents were like, being man, like, you know, yeah. like, damn, the oh. world got fucked yeah, over this, that. This is a big yeah. thing that's gonna happen. And I'm just like, I'm just trying to get through my degree right now. <laughs> like, I'm still probably eating Cocoa Pops and you know, <laughs> picking my nose. But we got to realize the same kind of thing has happened now with COVID-19. All four of us are very lucky that we could still sit here employed. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. A lot exactly. of people are now in that position that I was in then, mm, and yeah, they're going, exactly. oh God, what am I gonna do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the next generation of Ladybeard is gonna come out of <laughs> A couple of years from now, there'll right. be like a 2.0 of Ladybeard. Lady right? Ladybeard with a pink mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, yeah, so, so, so yeah, that's how it came okay, to be, I guess. So, yeah. okay. so okay. when so, did you move to Japan then? So then, um, so I started doing my metal covers of Cantonese pop songs, and mm. I started doing that in Hong Kong, very good. Um, did a couple of tours to some nearby places and I said, one of the things that kind of gave me the confidence to do it in the first place, because it's sort of, when you go full-time as the cross-dresser, mm. you can't ever really go back, can you? 
it's kind of, it works or you're screwed. Right, right, right. right, right, right so right. one of the things that kind of gave me the confidence to do it was, well, if I can't really get anything going on in Hong Kong, I know I can always move to Japan because I'm sure they'll love something like this. Oh yeah, of right, course. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I did a tour to Japan after I got myself organized in Hong Kong, mm. um, did Japanese songs. So I couldn't mm. speak Japanese yet, just learnt the songs phonetically. Right. Oh wow. Put together a show, Yeah. came over here with you know the handful of contacts I had, like three Japanese people I knew. Mm. Right. So I put it together a show, but it, popped because I was doing like covers of metal covers of like um what's that girl who sings first love Hikaru Shida what's that no that's that's a wrestler Utada Hikaru yeah thank you very much yeah, yeah. doing like metal covers of that and so forth mm. so the audience much they didn't know who I was right the audience who was at any of these shows would see this show they all knew the songs because they're famous songs yeah, yeah. and they they'd be the metal cover right, of course right. they're like yeah, ah yeah. this is hilarious yeah so that tour went incredibly well right so I'm like, okay, well, clearly I found the chosen land. Mm. So then, <laughs> clearly, the promised land has written in the ancient texts. The ancients promised land. The promised land. land of milk and honey. Right. So I, uh, yeah, so I went back to Hong Kong and I'm like, all right, clearly the mission now needs to be moved to Japan and mm. do the career in Japan. And I did, and here we are. Oh, wow. Man, do you know what it feels like? You know when you like you put your headphones in your pocket and it gets all tangled and you have yeah. to like untangle it? That's literally what we <laughs> did with your story right now. <laughs> it all finally fits together. It all uh, makes yeah. sense now. It's all finally one straight line <laughs> yeah. that I can co it's that I can understand. Yeah. So I came over at the end of 2013. Right. And then at the start of 2014, my images went uh, viral on the Twitter. Mm -hmm. Twitter. Yep. And um, then in um, 2015, I was put in this pop group with these uh, two young singers. And uh, we did a song called Nippon Manju and that blew up on the YouTubes. Mm -hmm. yep. And um, now we're riding high. <laughs> so, okay then like, because I would say like for people who don't know Lady Beard, for instance, I'd say like, I, I would say though, like if there's one thing about you, that you've done in your career, that's probably, I would say is probably the most well-known will probably be Lady Baby. Of course. Yeah. All right. So how did that come to be? So I was, uh, it was me and my former manager. Um, we're in Japan. We're only doing our stuff in Japan and so forth. Mm. And uh, so I was on the cover of Metropolis magazine. Do you know that magazine? I've definitely heard of that. Yeah, you know? it's it's a free magazine. How can you guys be foreigners in Japan, not in Metropolis? It's like, <laughs> you just leave it's, my house. You what year it's been? Yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, there's a free English magazine, like a street magazine in mm. Tokyo. I think in all Japan called Metropolis. Is there? Really? Is there? I've, 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 I've never seen it. I've never I, seen I, it. I'm definitely afraid of eye contact with strangers holding yeah. things. I'm like, don't, don't, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you Welshmen loved a good fight. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the Metropolis <laughs> magazine. <laughs> I need my reads. I, if I loved a good fight, I think I'd be deported <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> oh. So there's this magazine. There's yes, mag there's wow, magazine. it's a very popular magazine amongst mm. every foreigner in Japan, except one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mainly, did you know about this? Yeah, yeah right. Mainly Ashley, did, did you know about ages. this? No. Yes, right? <laughs> there are five foreigners here who didn't know about it. Uh, uh, my yeah, my friends who work at Metropolis Magazine, <laughs> I sincerely apologize for this negative press I, I think, I think that you are currently receiving on the Trash I'm Taste just saying, Podcast. Clearly the marketing strategy needs to be <laughs> yeah, I'm just yeah. Dude, that magazine is everywhere. Oh, well, clearly well, not, clearly you, not yeah. everywhere. Well, where do you get it? <laughs> like uh, like convenience store? No, not the convenience store. If you go to Tower Records or whatnot, they got that stack it, of free magazines. I don't think I've oh, been into a Tower right. Records in about wait, a year. Wait, I don't, I don't wait, wait, you look at the free stack of magazines. When you I, get, yeah, I just see potential get, toilet. When roll. you get to the airport and you're walking from your plane to right. immigration, yeah. there's all those magazines and stuff. I'm just right. I my have, phone. yeah, you're just checking yeah, your phone, yeah, right? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> Young people, <laughs> bloody generation gap, <laughs> millennials. <laughs> okay, so you're anyway, on the you're on the cover of Millennium. I'm on the cover of Metropolis magazine. The CEO of a Halloween costume company mm -hmm. is uh, getting off a plane. He's walking through the airport mm -hmm. and he sees Metropolis magazine with me on it. It's me in my pink and white bikini flexing. Right, right, right. right. And he said, what the hell is that? He's actually Chinese. So I probably said, just <laughs> That's probably what he actually said. <laughs> I just love to imagine like just this like super proper CEO, yeah, yeah. just like minding his own business, Bluetooth headphone in his ear. And he's just like, the fuck is that? <laughs> So he takes magazine yeah. and he takes it back to his office mm. and he's like, look at this. And his staff are like, yeah, that's this lady beard guy. He's mm. far and a dude. Right. And he said, bring him in. I want to work with him. Bring him in. Wow. wow. So we get a contact from this company and we go in 
And he's like, I want to work with you. And I'm like, all right. I thought he he's a Halloween costume company, right? right so right, I right. thought he's going to make like a uh, line of my bikinis. To <laughs> right, sell right, right. Halloween. Yeah. He's uh, like, I want to work with you, but I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be in touch. Okay. I'm like, okay. So he, <laughs> so, put, yeah, so he put you into his office. Yeah. Say that. yeah. We go back to what we were doing. And a month later, he calls us in again. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to put you in a pop group with a pair of uh, idols. Wow. Oh, wow. Wait, how, wait, how did that happen? Okay, that's, that's another jump. Yeah. How, how did he come up with that well, idea? Well, I wasn't there for that. Okay. You know, because okay. he did that in the you're, privacy you're of roulette, his own space. Uh, your life just sounds like a roulette wheel. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is going on? <laughs> what, why is this shit? Well, that's what you get for waking up in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just like, here's a bunch of money. It's like, oh, I don't even remember Benny on black. <laughs> it's like, um, uh, uh, anyway, so, okay, so, okay, so this guy somehow manages yeah, so, to get you in this idol group. Yeah, so he spoke to some people he knew and yeah. he's, I'm going to put you in a group. And then we did that first song and it blew up. And that was Lady Baby. Uh, wow. So he somehow knew Baby Metal? Wait, was Baby Metal well, baby even, metal, were they metal, even established yeah, back yeah, then? They yeah, were, they were very popular at the time. It right, was recently right. after Gimme Choco. Oh, okay, right. yeah, yeah. So they were very hot and they were getting spoken about a lot in Japan. Mm. But it's like, I rem remember the meeting. He goes, <laughs> he goes, yeah. He's a heavy metal singer. They're idols. Yeah. Yeah. So your baby metal are very popular at the moment, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this will be just like baby metal, but with Ladybeard. Ladybeard. <laughs> baby metal. <laughs> <laughs> Lady baby, that was the meaning. I'm like, right? <laughs> like, cool. <laughs> I and guess this was, this, was CEO, this was the CEO of a Halloween costume. Halloween costume and company. they just decided this to get into. Just became a CEO, guy. We're fast thinking like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's the kind of fast thinking we need as far as CEO. That's, that's, that's a decision making skills yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a smart man. He uh, he's from China. He came over to Japan like right. with no money, like 30 years ago or something, right. and he okay. made his living like he'd go outside Tokyo Dome just during the bubble outside Tokyo Dome, he would like sell like light sticks or something when right, there's sporting right. events. Yeah. And he somehow made his business happen. That is like literally that. how like every entrepreneur in the 70s started. Like that, isn't that like every entrepreneur story yeah, from yeah, the yeah, 70s? Yeah. It's like, I had no money when coming to started this country. On the streets, I, now sold, I sold paper clips and now I own a multi-million yeah. dollar corporation. Yeah. Yeah. He did a good just, job. Man, my dad was rich. He did. <laughs> <laughs> Gave me a small <laughs> loan of a <laughs> million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> This episode is sponsored by Harry's. You know what you shouldn't have to choose between, gentlemen? What? A great shave and a fair price. I'm always trying to choose between the two, and frankly, I'm quite sick of it. That's where you're wrong, Joey, because with <gasps> Harry's, you don't have to. Oh my God! And as you guys know, last time when we promoted Harry's, they gave us the box to promote and mm -hmm. I actually took it home and used it. And gentlemen- Was it good? It's fucking good. Really? <laughs> it's good. I mean, you are the hairiest member of Trash I know, taste. I know. I'm always shaving here and it was, yeah, so clean. Much better than ones that I get from the store. I know that sounds like an ad, like, like I'm being told to say that, but yeah, no, yeah. it's legit. That, that's 100% okay. good. It's All good, right. it's good. Harry's delivers a close, comfortable shave at a fair price. Still as low as $2 per refill. That's Ooh. actually really fucking good. And for a limited time, Harry's is offering their starter set plus a free travel size body wash at harrys.com slash trash taste. As you guys know from our previous Harry's sponsorship, they have their own German factory that makes blades to a precision. They've been doing it for over a hundred years to give you that clean shave. That's job. why you fucking love it, right? That's why I love it. And there's no gimmicks or unnecessary features. It's just a damn good razor. Combined with a weighted handle, an ergonomic texture grip and flex hinge. I, I don't even know what most of these words mean, but all I know is that it was a damn good it shave. It sounds clean as fuck. <laughs> Plus there is a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee Guaranteed. Harry stands behind the quality of their blades so much that they have a 100% money back guarantee on harrys.com. And the prices are pretty damn fair. It, it as like is. Really. Said, I mean, we've already talked about the price. That's pretty damn good in my opinion. So what are you waiting for? For a limited time, Harry's has made their exclusive offer even mm. better for listeners mm. of this show. New customers can get the special offer and the Harry starter sets and body wash at harrys.com slash trash taste. And if you go there, you'll get a five blade razor, weighted Truman handle, foaming shaved gel, a travel blade cover, and a travel size body wash. And it's pretty damn good, by the way. There's never been a better time to go to Harry's. So go to harrys.com slash trash taste to redeem your offer today. Thank you to Harry's for sponsoring the episode. Back to the show. All right, gentlemen, I'm going to bring us back in from the uh, commercial break. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it as if, as if, um, we're in South Africa. I'm going to do it in an Afrikaans accent. Well, why South Africa? You'll be your South Africa. I'll tell, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why in a second. Let me just bring us back in for this commercial okay. break. Okay. You ready? Go ahead, go okay. Ahead. I'm going to do it like it's my okay. show. South Africans, right. rate, rate okay. his accent. Right, here okay. we, you ready? Here we go. 
Welcome back to the Trish Taste Podcast <laughs> on the Voice of Africa Radio Network. I'm your host, Lady Beard, here today with more guests, Connor, Gaunt, and Joey. Gentlemen, how are you? That's actually really good. <laughs> Thanks, man. I've got like, a thing for you, South Africa at the moment. You sound you sound like my math teacher back in high school. Was he South African? He was very South African. Okay, cool. Excellent. Yeah. It'd be awkward if you were like, no, he's not South African. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, any, if any Africana were offended by my accent, I was not trying to appropriate your culture. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I have, I have. So my shower curtain. Is <laughs> what is going on? What is actually going on? Stop interrupting. Tell what me what I've got. I'll tell you what's going on. You know what this is like? This is the conversation equivalent of like changing tabs. <laughs> we, we have been like completely drunk for episodes so that we're easier to follow than this. What is going on? Lady Beard's okay. shower curtain. Okay. Okay. Yeah, talk about your shower, your shower curtain. curtain. Is a very badly produced map of the world. Okay. So when I was buying shower curtains from whichever shower curtain dispensary I was <laughs> buying from, right? Probably wasn't Amazon because I'm too old. So I was uh, I bought the cheapest one, and it was okay. this very poorly produced map of the world. Okay. Right? And like it's like the borders are in the wrong places. The colors of the countries bleed over the borders. Ugh. Things are spelt wrong, and um. One of the things it does is on a country, it does not highlight the biggest city right. or the capital city. It it's highlights some other city. Just and some random other city. other cities are left out. Right. So for instance, in Australia, I think in Australia, they managed to get Canberra. So that was, uh, that was right. Well, that, at Japan, least they got the capital. Yeah. In Japan, it's Sendai. And, what? And, and, and no other city. <laughs> right. right? Um, and then, uh, and, and, and the, so then, so then, all right. So, so, so how does that lead to your Afrikaans accent? <laughs> <laughs> this when this I'm, connection I want to see. When I'm sitting on the toilet, and I won't go into detail about what's going on at the time. Oh, well, we can imagine. You can imagine. Yes. Um, my eye line is such that I look directly at that bottom part of Africa on this map. Right. So it's like right. South Africa, Namibia, Botswana. Right, 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 right. And on the South Africa, because it's a dodgy map. There's no Cape Town. There's no Johannesburg. Right. But there is um, Blumflentin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is just some random Ble town. Blumflentin. <laughs> firstly, it's fun to say. <laughs> <laughs> say it with me, you try. What is it? Blumflentin. Blumflentin. That was excellent. <laughs> Can you say that in a Welsh accent? <laughs> <laughs> you know what that sounds like? That sounds like that sounds like something the Swedish chef would say on the Muppets. <laughs> this is a real place. Yeah. It's a real place. <laughs> it's four, the capital. Four fucking privileged people it's laughing at Africa. <laughs> it's Look the capital <laughs> of a part of South Africa called, called uh, Free State. Okay. Blim Blim Flintine is, is the capital of that. Biggest city slash capital of Free State. And right. that's everyone who's watching this from Bloom Florentine is like, why it's so funny. <laughs> and Bloom Florentine is yeah. um, what I look at when I'm sitting I'm on the toilet. Taking shit. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so for that reason, I did some research on Bloom Florentine. Okay. And uh, uh, now my current my boom is South Africa. So, okay. so that's why you did the Afrikaans accent. That's why I did the Afrikaans accent. And you can call me, I don't know an Afrikaner surname. What's a common Afrikaner surname? You, you're asking as if I know. Dirt and fault. You can call me Lady Bird Dirt and fault from here on in. Joey, take it away. I don't. I don't think I can take it away. <laughs> we were on the. We were on the. Oh, let's, let's, let's lady baby, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was about to bring us back. You guys, you guys, you guys from now on can never give a shit for the amount of tangents we go on because that was easily the biggest tangent we've ever been on. I was about to say we're, we're quite famous for going on tangents, and I swear there's like tangents within tangents within yeah. tangents. Like when you tell a single yeah. story, no this, that was like that was like moving on to a different shape. No tangent has ever. Been Started as beautifully as my shower curtain. <laughs> the greatest start to a tangent. Okay, like okay. The greatest start to a tangent. <laughs> okay, right, so, so Lady Baby. Okay, so a Halloween so. costume CEO put me in a pop group. Okay, Lady okay. and you were in Lady yes. Baby. And, and how long uh, did that go for? Well, uh, I was in Lady Baby. So uh, our first ever song, Nippon Manju, blew up on the internets mm. and it got very, very popular. And so now we were the hottest group. And, and, and of so, so when this was formed, you had. You didn't have any say in who the two idols were. Literally, just we're putting with two people. Be friends. I was with told them. you're doing this group. Yeah, uh, that's right. Um, okay. So that happened. Uh, I was in Lady Baby for like a year and a half or something. Mm -hmm. So I did like uh, four singles with them, 
and then some other kind of B-side type songs as well. Um, Due to a series of events I won't go into, uh, I was unceremoniously relieved of my position in Lady Baby. Right, right. And now they don't exist anymore. Was it because you were uh, at the Danny's being a little too? too noisy. Did you get a noise Every time I was at Denny's, every time. You know what? Yeah, it turns out when you choose a heavy metal singer, you want him to be as quiet. <laughs> so, anyway. so then, yeah. So then, you did the lady baby stuff, and then you did kind that. of did a whole other bunch of did a bunch of groups. other stuff. Uh, the, my time in that group ended. Mm. Um, they went on without me, but now they're done anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That right. whole thing has mm. come to an end. Mm. Um, I went and I uh, did some other stuff, uh, but now you, you have a new group. Finally, got a new group. Right. So okay. uh, everyone loved Nepo, uh, Lady Baby when I was there, mm. right? So me and the two cute little Japanese girls, everyone loved it. Mm. I'm like, let's do that again. <laughs> and for a series of reasons, right. we couldn't for five years. Right. 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 Basically, sum it up Japanese showbiz politics. Right. right, right. Basically, mm. we did some other stuff. I was have been happy with the other stuff I've done, mm. um, but now we're in a position where we can do it again. Mm. So I'm like, sweet as. Let's do it again. So basically mm. what we've done is we've constructed as many of the parts that came together to make Nippon Manju as we mm. could. Mm. We've reconstructed those. Mm. Right. And we're doing the same thing again. And it's I'm very excited because for five years I've been every day been told, why'd you leave Lady Baby? I wanted you to keep doing it. Yeah, I liked yeah, it. Yeah. Every day for five years. Yeah. So finally I can do this formation again because right. clearly it's, it's what I want to do. It's what the whole it's world the wants to see. Mm. So... Brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Lady Beard 2021 coming at you with brand new group. I'm allowed to release brand new group's name, correct? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where was the name? Baby Beard. Oh! Oh! 2021, ladies and gentlemen, Baby Beard coming at you. Baby Beard. Baby Beard. Baby Beard. <laughs> I'm, that I'm, makes more sense yeah. than Lady Baby. It does. It does. Yeah, like, I'm, like as a name, right? I thought that. Yeah. <laughs> right. I I'm, thought that at that naming meeting, I right. was like, why not Baby Beard? Why not Baby Beard? Yeah. If you're gonna take that approach. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Lady oh, Baby. Okay. Lady Baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's ignore the one person in the room who speaks English. His idea of a good English name. <laughs> <laughs> so. Baby so, Beard is on like Donkey Kong. I'm so excited. Uh, have you done stuff with them yet? Oh, <laughs> Joey. <laughs> well, my, I don't know if I said a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Incidentally. Incidentally. No. <laughs> We've done nothing, Joey. <laughs> oh, have you? No. We haven't done shit. Incidentally, it's funny you ask that. Yes. Because this whole thing was ready to get up and get running at the beginning of 2020. And right. then, oh, we all know what happened okay. to that. We all know what yeah. happened to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're in this um, unique position mm. where we have a new group to release mm. and we're not really capable of doing all the things you normally do to release a group. Right, such you're kind of stuck in limbo. Shows, right? yes. right, yeah. and so what you need to do is you need to head down to the Baby Beard TikTok. There you're gonna see all the latest from Baby Beard coming at you, full of updates and all the things we're gonna be doing as soon as we're allowed to do normal things like be on a stage. I love how like this is the first guest that we've had that's just like, fuck the end of the show. Yeah, no. I'm promoting my shit now. Hell yeah, I am. Hi, hi, hi. You hey. are you're a true showman. Hey, yeah. hey, <laughs> hey. Go to social media. <laughs> <laughs> Look at baby beard. Do the thing. The twitty talky, the twitty twatty, the, I should say that word, the twitty toppy, the, the facey bookie, the, the instant ham. Do we have another one that I'm forgetting about? Well, we'll put all the links in the description. Yeah, the the description. In the description, <laughs> smash space. the like button. That's what the young people say nowadays. Yeah, yes. but they don't yeah. say it in the middle of the episode. They don't say that at the end. You can not think we're ending. Yeah, yeah. No, we are, this, this podcast is just starting, guys. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. We're still, we're still going, we're I'll still going. I'll bring us back for that interview. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
as part of the voice we of can't, Ithaca. We can't be welcome work. back every day. Yeah. We're going to be welcoming back. Every five back. minutes, every we're welcoming minutes. them back. Every toilet break, welcome back. Anyway, I have a new group called Baby Beard. Me, two adorable Japanese girls. It's going to be fantastic. If you so, loved Nippon Manju, you will love this. Go watch it, please. Oh! That I'm, just, I'm just glad you table is yeah. the victim today. You're, you're fucking beating the shit out of all. That's what happens when you bring a pro it, wrestler it's in. A, yeah. Joey's going to get body slammed through this yeah. in a second. Great. Right. It's, it's a great table, actually. I'm just glad oh. you're sticking with something so. familiar for once, not going to like fucking astrophysics or something. Yeah, yeah right. Would you like me to? I don't know much no, about no, it. No, no, no. no, 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 when you made your previous, you said that you didn't even have a say in it. Did you get much say in when you're making this one, like who you wanted to bring on to it, or was it literally just find me two cute Japanese girls? We held or, auditions. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. We I, held right. auditions, and, and, you, and you got to choose. And <laughs> yep. So I was nice. on the audition panel. I'll tell you what, auditioning is a totally different thing, as in mm. being on the the choosing side of the mm. audition. Because for my whole life, I've been on the doing the audition right, side. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the first time I've been on the you know watching the audition side, it's a different game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But instantly, it's um it's very interesting because it kind of takes away any. It means that all the times you've been rejected in auditions, it no longer feels personal. Once no. You, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch the panel because you can see. Girls came in and they were wonderful. Like they were really good. I was mm. like, I think you're fantastic, but you're just not what we need right now mm. for this. Right, right, right. Right. A right. couple of them really good, but just like a bit too tall. Things like this, right? right, right, right. So, it's, but it's kind of upsetting because you're like, I want to give you a job, but I just can't. Yeah, right, right. So, what were you looking for? What was the criteria? Well, you had to oh, not too sure. tall. <laughs> <laughs> that That's was the it. main criteria. <laughs> not too tall. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's it. That, really? That no, it. no, no. no. <laughs> I was going to say, there's plenty of grandmas here. That's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so were you like looking for like a certain like vocal style? Because I assume yeah, it's like vocalists, right? They had right? to be able to sing. They right. had to be able to dance. Mm. They yeah. had to be small enough. They had to be cute enough. Mm. Um, they had to be willing- Just a to, normal idol. Like, well, had yeah. To be, yeah. yeah, but they had to be willing to go all over the world. Because, mm. you know, when there's no freaking bloody death flu, Apocalypse. <laughs> We're planning yeah. to be going all over how, the how world. How do you make it sound worse than it is? <laughs> death flu apocalypse. <laughs> the death flu apocalypse. What if that's I add, what that's if a I great sound effect. Oh! That's a, death. Death flu apocalypse is like an amazing metal band name. <laughs> death flu apocalypse. Hey guys, with death flu apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you should call Baby Beard. Maybe I should. Yeah. Death Baby Flu Beard. Apocalypse. That's our second single, Death Flu Apocalypse. That's actually a really good idea. Shiori, make a note, please. <laughs> Death Flu Apocalypse. Um, uh, I can't remember what we were saying. The criteria yes, for the auditions. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, but then like it's, uh, yeah, so you had to be willing to go overseas. Mm. And uh, they were the main criteria. And then it's also standing with me and the other two. Mm. Does that, do the piece Balance of that it puzzle. Out, fits, right. yeah. mm. A lot of them it's like, you're really good. We really like you, but you don't fit together with me and any of the other girls. You know? mm. So the hard thing, we had to get two of them. Right, right, One right. is relatively easy, two is hard. Right, See? right. So you need two people who can match this up. Anyway, we did, uh, we ended up with two fantastic girls, one called Kotomi yeah. and one called Suzu. Mm -hmm. And foreigners always think Suzu's name is either Susan or Suza. <laughs> Susan. <laughs> it's neither of those two. Think Suzuki without the key. It's a Suzu. No, you should just you should just commit to the Susan bit. Susan. That should be like her nickname. Really? Yeah. She's not a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> Is, is every Susan a librarian? <laughs> Maybe they are. I, I don't know a single Susan. So you know I a single you. Susan? I know Do you know Susan. a single Susan? Do you know a single Susan? Uh, uh, yeah, not since like the 80s. Suddenly uh. a single Susan cannot be established in this. All the Susans in the comment section, raise your hand right now. <laughs> um, I'm a Susan. Uh, I am a big fan of Susans everywhere. Uh, <laughs> Susans are wonderful people. Which friends? Which Susan, you know what, what do you think, yeah. Susan? What? I love you. I'm not trying to offend you. The yeah. point I'm trying to make is Suzu is not named Susan. Susan. That's the point. Yeah, but you made it sound like as if like, I love everyone named Susan, but these other names, <laughs> yikes. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, I'm knackered. <laughs> You're knackered. <laughs> I'm getting tired. Just like, uh, I gotta drink some of my fluids. So like, okay, so I guess like- Where do you, you, even, begin, where do you even begin asking questions? Yeah, yeah. right? Cause yeah, it's like- This shit is so crazy. It's like, what it's the just, fuck am I- So like, where, where do we even start? Yeah. We yeah, yeah. have got the same musicians who made Nippon Manju. Okay, okay, okay. And they have made a banger. So Nippon Manju is uh, like the famous- That was the first, that was the lady. That was the famous, famous lady. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can I say the name of first single? 
Oh, please <laughs> go to internet. Check out Nippon Kara Konnichiwa. Bye, baby man. Same people who made Nippon Manju. It's amazing, people. It's piece of musical madness. It'll make your earbuds tingle with wonder. You have never heard something as amazing as this. <laughs> Adorable Japanese cute little idol voices. One noisy cross-dresser screaming. What more could you want in a musical product? Joey, take us to a commercial. Yeah, we, we should, we our should audio go. readout looks insane right now. <laughs> we, we, <should> <laughs> we just destroyed the why, why are we reading the ads? Yeah, That's right? I'm like. I, I don't want to read the ads. What's, what's <laughs> the product? Uh, what's the product we're no, you, you just read your own ad. <laughs> Yeah. You literally just read your talking points. Yeah, you, you are the talking let's point. Do a, let's do an ad for a fake product that we haven't oh, no. invented yet. <laughs> like, the, uh, like the South African survival kit. <laughs> you ready? Shitty, shitty but I don't know kit. about you, oh but when I find God. myself lost in Blum Flintine, it's always important <laughs> to make sure that I've got a survival kit with me. That way, if I find myself mm -hmm. without food, water, or shelter, there'll be something I'll be able to do. In you make it sound like that town is, is like a, the is woods. A fever dream. Like, yeah. I, I like I, what have I stumbled into today? I, <laughs> I've had I've so had so fever dreams that are less weird than yeah. this. I, I, I hope I hope there are no South African ladies named Susan who happen to listen <laughs> to this. If you're a South African named Susan, leave a message in the comment box below. Okay, I, I, I'm curious. So you you know you obviously uh, you said that you're going to be touring worldwide. Yeah. Where is hopefully. the majority of your, your audience, Jap Jap Japanese? So, uh, well, obviously Japan, yeah. but you know, it's, it's the group, um, you yeah. know, we have the, uh, the death flu apocalypse at the moment. Mm, it's right. a little bit hard to establish mm. physically mm. where yeah. the audience is gonna be. Mm. My, personally, um, I have a big fan bases all over the world, which is great. Mm. So we do the conventions like you characters do. Yeah. So characters. <laughs> <laughs> do you not consider yourself a character? <laughs> Die, elephant god! I mean, the first time I met you was, uh, oh god, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, god, how many years ago was that? That was 2016. Five years ago? 16, yeah, 2016, five years ago. Five years, five years, ago. Five years, ago. Five years ago. And like, I had known about you, but then when I actually saw you in person, I was like, oh shit. Oh, thank you. It's that guy in the dress. Yeah, I, feel <laughs> yeah. like, I feel like, you know, I don't know if this is rude, but I feel like a lot of people know of you, but they're not like quite sure, you know, because because your name, it's when you, you know. Your what, reputation precedes you. <laughs> well, when you you're see, just a memorable listen, character. Listen, yeah. if, if, I, if I pop on your feed, right, you know, on, my t on Twitter, you see my face yeah. like, great, another white guy. Yeah. <laughs> on mine, right? You, you know, you see you, it's like, it's kind of hard not to be like, I think I've seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> it's either, it's either, it's either I like that happens a lot. Yeah. It's, either, it's either I've never seen this or I've definitely seen yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. You know you've seen yeah. this. Yeah. You know, hit it with, yeah. what the hell is that? Yeah. You know, I'll watch my videos, tons of them, they'll be like, they'll come to me like, do I know you? From yeah, somewhere. yeah. yeah I'm, like, every white generic white guy in existence. Yeah. All right, you look beautiful. Have you ever had Get anyone come up to you and being like, have you, have you, have you like dead us? Ever had anyone come up to you and being like, have I seen you before? Oh, all the time. Really? It's much more like, oh, Ladybeard. That's much more. Right, right, right. But I'm talking they about know. like people they... are like they're not sure if you're Ladybeard. Uh yes, yes. Really? Yes. But what? Because you're so like, how does that what's, happen? What's interesting about being, about being a long haired, bearded white man in Japan <laughs> is there's quite a lot of long haired, bearded white men in Japan. <laughs> really? And I have been confused with people such as Zach Wilder. <laughs> Who? Who's Zach Wilder? He, uh, he plays guitar for Black Sabbath. <laughs> oh. A black oh. label society. He's like a, he's like a metal He's a heavy musician. metal legend. Yeah. He, I don't look like him. You don't, I don't look, look like, like him at all. But I've got long hair and a beard, so I do. It's like yeah. white long haired beard, you're Zach Wilder. You can see um, the picture right here yeah. now. It looks I, nothing um, alike. I was standing at a bus stop in Shibuya. I'm standing there waiting my bus stop. And this lady, actually she was another white lady. All right. I should say another one because it's the first one in the story apart from, <laughs> apart from South African Susan. Yeah. Um, she was a white lady. She comes up, she looks at the bus stop. She reads the times and she sort of looks at me, reads the times, kind of looks at her phone and she goes, you look like Jesus. Created <laughs> man with long hair. <laughs> you look like Jesus. I'm like, ah, oh, thank you. She goes, can you do this? I want to take a photo and send it to my kids. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Why her kids? Yeah. Well, look, 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 look at what I made this peasant do at the, at the taxi stand. I made him. I made him T-pose. Like, <laughs> it's like I'm an atheist, but I know you guys love Jesus. Oi, oi! I, I think as far as people to look like, Jesus is pretty good. 
I mean, I've gotten that before as well. You so. got Jesus? Yeah. When I had long hair. I Japanese definitely got Jesus? That. Yeah, yeah, Japanese Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I, f- I feel like anyone with like long hair and a slight beard. I've, I've, I'm sure yeah, they've gotten back. And it's, and it's tall. Grow yeah. yours out. You'll be Thai Jesus. No, it's, it's literally, <laughs> it's literally a lot. <laughs> It's literally long hair, beard, and you're tall. <laughs> right. That's the that's yeah, the three yeah. steps to be Jesus. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the three steps to be three Jesus. steps to be Jesus. <laughs> long hair, beard, and you're tall. Where's the wiki how art going? Like how, how, to how, to how, how to be Jesus. How to be Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I've never uh, have you ever had like crazy requests like that from fans in the street? Like to no. be like, can you do this weird thing? I've never, I've never asked to be T pose before. No, I've never <laughs> asked a T pose either. I probably will do now. now that yeah, we'll do. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, I'm like T T. Is Just there like any? T-T. Uh, <laughs> is there anything like? I guess okay, because like that fell flat. Didn't from- <laughs> 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 no, I was just trying to like formulate my question. Right. <laughs> There's so many things yeah. going on. Yeah. I'm trying to like make sense of this chaos right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sensory overload from yeah, one exactly. source. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so cause like, I, I would say like, I think anyone can agree, right? Looking at your entire history, you have done a lot of fucking things. A heap of things. Yeah. You've done a lot of different things. Yeah. Is there like that's any, an that's a, that is a total <laughs> understatement, but like, is there anything that you would personally like to like, <laughs> kind of add on to that? Is there like another completely separate thing where you're like, maybe down the road, I'd like <laughs> to do something like that? I've injured myself now. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I want to do a freaking baby beard as in, my time with Lady Baby mm. was brought to a halt so prematurely mm. and right. so abruptly, and I'm not going to go into details. But look, I was not really treated very nicely in the process. Mm-hmm. Right, um, and that was so unfinished that I feel a sense of um, incompletion mm. if we don't mm. go back and we don't finish that cycle off now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? um, so that's kind of what I want to do. Be there. Then beyond that, there's many other things that I want to do, mm. but um, that are like completely separate. Right, yeah, from what you want to do. Yeah, but I don't want to bring them up now. Oh yeah, I mean, I guess you got to you, you, you got to you got to hide it, right, and kind of reveal it. Or uh, look, yeah, or you look, just don't want to share it. Well, nah, I mean, if you say it now, there's pressure from to do it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. no, it's yeah. not that. Look, let's just stick with one thing we're talking about at one time. So far, we've been we very unsuccessful doing <laughs> yeah. that with the rest of the podcast. Yeah, we so we've been unsuccessful <laughs> because you go on seventeen million <laughs> tangents. <laughs> this is, hey, look, that, that was one accent that turned into a different accent yeah. halfway through. Aye, look, I just want to do a baby a beard. That's another thing. I feel like I'm doing it right now with my life. When we finish that, I'll do another thing. Right now, that's the thing. Mamma mia. <laughs> what? Where do we go from here? I, I like, How did we get here? I'm, I'm like genuinely like, I've never been dumbfounded in my life. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Sure. Please. Sure. Gart. Yes. Your individual YouTube channel. Yes. Mm. How do you pronounce the name of that? Giguk. Did you pronounce it Gig UK like everyone else? I said Guy Gook. <laughs> <laughs> That's the third alternative. Yeah. And then, and then I thought potentially GG UK. I thought maybe you're just a huge Girls Generation fan. <laughs> you could be. Gigi, Gigi, like, could be. GG UK. Let's see Girls Generation. We'll get copyright claim. We gotta get copyright claim. Really? Copyright claim? What? Because you're just because you're too good. Acapella? You can't do an no, acapella? No, no, no. Get no. out of here. No, no, you, you can get you copyright claims. You can't sing claims. any song? No. no. <laughs> get out of here. Yeah, no, Lady B like... discovers the YouTube algorithm. Yeah. Oi, You've been oi. spoiled by TikTok. Yeah. yeah. So the YouTube algorithm has gotten so good now that they can detect covers of songs when people are just singing it. What if you're trying to sing the song, but you're a really bad singer? No, we're going to work. No. Get out <laughs> of I've, here. I've heard, I've heard people, like I've, I've actually heard stories of people humming songs in their YouTube videos and getting copyright claims for it. Get out of yeah. here. What if you make an original song <laughs> and purely by chance, you accidentally picked the same hook yeah, you as get a fucked. real song? That's yeah, called yeah, you get, you get. a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, you'll lose that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You'll lose that. Welcome to the YouTube man, ecosystem. Man <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's terrible. This is the first Discovers time on the podcast where I've seen you just be dumbfounded for words. <laughs> it's, so, it's so bizarre because like I live in a universe where I have to like pretend like music doesn't exist outside of copyright free music. Right. It's so yeah. bizarre. Um, is there any questions you'd like to ask us? Cause I feel like we've asked like literally every question we can ask you. It's been good. I feel a bit selfish for not talking about you people. No, 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 no. no. you're the guest. Our viewers <laughs> know us 
They're pretty fucking sick of us. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I was really enthusiastic to hear about Gygook slash GG UK. <laughs> so and now that that's done, I wanted to sing Girls' Generation with everybody. But, but you can't. I'm curious, have you ever had a normal job? Like, <laughs> like a quote unquote normal. I'm just wondering, <laughs> like, because I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, right, you know, if I went into like, you know, I, I go into like H&M and yeah. you're just there like, I, I can't imagine- How is your t-shirt, sir? <laughs> I, can't of, I, can't ima- I can't imagine you were like a big W or anything yeah. like that, you know, like, no. I can't imagine you're like a regular store. Um, I one of the reasons I've worked so hard on this career yeah. is exactly because I don't, <laughs> don't yeah. exactly fit it elsewhere. Do so, I? so, have you ever had a normal job? Yes, I'm, I'm, yes, my first job. What, what, okay. what normal. Your, what, what were your first jobs? Um, right. yeah, 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 yeah. I worked in retail. When yeah, I was God. like Where? 18 what you, or whatever. What, what did you do? Uh, you know, store in Australia, girls clothing store called Supre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked at Supre. <laughs> you worked at a Supre? <laughs> I, I was the first okay. boy they ever hired. Yeah. Like, how did that go? Oh, well, and now I'm very <laughs> stuck. They, they fire you for- Where did you learn? Where do you, where do you think, where do you think you learned the drip from? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm very bad at normal jobs. This yeah. is why yeah. I've got such a- um, I cannot uh, imagine you working job. at retail at <laughs> all. No. I wasn't very good at it. So I worked wow. retail and then I didn't enjoy it much. Mm. So I stopped that. And then I became a dish pig in a restaurant. Right. So okay. I was a dish pig in like the nicest restaurant in Adelaide. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So that in one way, that's We're a great, done. in some respects, <laughs> the finest uh, establishment. Welcome to South Australia. <laughs> um, we have one McDonald's. <laughs> Yeah, so I was a dish pig at this restaurant. It was actually, mm. actually mm. quite a good job. Right. There are a few things about it that made it hard. Mm. I was bad at the plates, as in I was good at doing the pans. Right, right, right. The frying pans of that. I, I liked that. I was good at it. I was very slow at the plates and the knives and forks. Right. So that ruined it for me. Because it's like more like fragile. What's, what's, what's the difference? I was, just, I was just bad at it. Well, with the pans, you've got, you're there with your sink. Yeah. Pan goes, oh, sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Pan goes in, wash pan, pan goes out. Yeah. Right, right, right. With the um, plates and stuff, there was like an industrial dishwasher that you had to load. Oh, so you gotta, right, gotta, right, Get right. the plates loaded, put them in, wash them, get them out, get them dried. Wouldn't that be easier though? Well, I was just bad at it. I don't know how, why. How do you be bad at that? I was just crap at it. <laughs> is, it cause, is it cause like dishes are more delicate? Cause yeah, I, can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine you handling there's things that. delicately. There's, there's, that's part of it, but also it's just, there's just such volume of it. You gotta go so fast. Mm, so that's right. what I felt. I could do it, but I was just slow. Right, right. So right. therefore I could not work if it was only me. I had to be there with someone else and I would do the pans and they would do the um the machine. Wow. Yeah. But generally I actually quite enjoyed that job. The problem is it was always on a Friday and Saturday night. So you'd miss your social life, right? Mm. Uh, right. No more cross-dressing parties for me, God. <laughs> <laughs> None of them. None of them. I, was, I was covered in slop. This episode is sponsored by Honey. We all shop online. And gentlemen, we've all seen that promo code feel taunt us. It keeps me up at night. It, I, I can't stand it. Thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes like a peasant is a thing of the past. Tell me, Joey, what does Honey do? Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones it finds to your cart. It supports over 30,000 stores online. 30,000? 30, 30,000. And they range from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. I've saved over $30 on pizza and we all know how expensive that damn thing is in Japan. <laughs> but thankfully, thanks to Honey, it's an affordable price. But God, how does it work? I'll tell you how it works, Connor. Imagine this, you're shopping at one of your favorite sites. I'm imagining. So when you're at the checkout, mm. the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Oh. Wait a few seconds uh-huh. and then Honey will search for all the coupons it can find and apply it to that site. It's that easy? Yes. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you just watch as the price goes down. What? Damn. Not just that, God. Honey has found it's over 17 million members over two billion dollars in savings. B? Billion with a B? That's that's a B, God. Wow. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in just a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. And we would never recommend something we don't use. So you can get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash trash taste. That's joinhoney.com slash trash taste. Links down in the description below. Back to the episode. Maylene's killing it. Let's hear it for Maylene. <laughs> Maylene Ashley, killing it. Maylene Ashley Shiori, doing an excellent job. Right. Okay, right. I quite enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I quite enjoy long flights. <laughs> you, know, you just started <laughs> to the right. audience. You just went. Yeah. I, en- I quite enjoy long flights. Right. How can, how can anyone don't. enjoy long flights? Well, what do you enjoy? What do you? Do? Are you in like economy? When you're running around all the time. 
And what? Do we, hey, do we are you a peasant? Just <laughs> 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 say that did sound a bit aggressive. Yeah. No, 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 because, because you don't, you don't fly in economy. <laughs> do you? Economy? Oh, no. riff, riff, <laughs> exit my studio! No, 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 no. <laughs> caviar, please. <laughs> no, because in my mind, I don't enjoy like I only fly economy, and I don't enjoy that shit. That's yeah, it. I feel like when you He's say I enjoy, now. you know, people who say up. I enjoy trying to appeal flying. to the little yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Commoners. Yeah. 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 If, someone, if someone says I enjoy flying, my first immediate thought is Ah, Emirates first class. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I bet you do. My stance on the experience. A man's about to start a twit longer. <laughs> my stance on the experience is, you know, being the people we are. Right. Show yeah. business. Uh -huh. Busy uh -huh. schedules, busy mm, lives. Yeah. Lots of getting up, running around the place, Tokyo mm. trains. Yeah. Hectic, hectic, hectic. Get to the airplane. No choice but to just sit there. Right. For right. nine hours. That's great. And watch a damn movie. Right. Right. So what's great about that? Because it means I'm not running around like a psycho. No, it's, I do agree that it's quite relaxing. It's like the one time that you like disconnect from the world. Yeah, because yeah. there's no other yeah, option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one can get upset if you didn't reply an email because you're on a plane. Mm. Uh -huh. yeah, that's actually, true. like since they started introducing Wi-Fi oh, to planes, I actually yeah. don't like it. No, because yeah. the worst part is that it's not even good enough. So it's just good enough where you can maybe load a tweet after yeah. refreshing like 10 yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it gets your hope up. You pay 20 bucks for it and it's shit. Oh. No, no, I completely get like the whole like disconnecting from the yeah, internet mate. thing yeah. because yeah. like, I, I remember like one time I flew, the one time I flew business in my life, I was like, oh, I get Wi-Fi and it's fast enough to load YouTube. Mm, yeah. Hell yeah, all I'm gonna do is watch YouTube. In the end, I slept for half of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's it's very that's comfortable that, in business. That's yeah, the yeah. point, right? Is yeah. that you, people get it to sleep, man. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. But it's I was like, oh no, I'm gonna be in the most comfortable position watching all the YouTube I want and there'll be no distractions whatsoever. I think that's I watched not. it for like two hours like and I was like, sleep I'm on gonna sleep. I don't know what it is about plane, but for me sleeping on a plane is like nearby impossible. Yeah, yeah. Really? Like th there, is, there is just like, they, I can't. I can't know how you sleep with yeah, your you physique. <laughs> I have trouble enough finding space on like on like a plane seat as I, enough yeah. as it is. I, I, you must scare everyone when you walk on that plane. Everyone's like, "Fuck!" I, please, <laughs> I hope he's not next to me. Think I'm a terrorist. <laughs> so, honestly, I'm, I'm, no, hair. you're just like a giant no, dude. Yeah, if I yeah. see someone, if, uh, I'm not gonna lie. If I'm sitting there in economy, right, and yeah. I see you walking down the aisle, I'm like, "Please, please, not next to me, not next to me." Because I'm, I'm like, I like it when it's an old lady. Yeah, yeah, I because, know she's yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. she's gonna be like. If there's, a, seat, if there's a massive dude up. of this size sitting next to you, you're like, well, fuck. Rip armrest. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that armrest is going to him, not and me. Also, the moment I ask you to move to go to the toilet, I've made like a fucking scene. I, 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 it's like, we, <laughs> the whole plane is to reshuffle. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, chickens are falling out. Next time you catch a plane, mm -hmm. yeah. you could try reading a book. <laughs> Sarcasm? I'm serious. <laughs> that's I mean, another thing you could do on a plane. I, which that's is that's what that's what I do though. Mm. I think yeah, it's great. It gives me plenty yeah. of time to like read a book. This, sounds, this sounds like right, like you know one of those very pandering things. Like ten yeah. things you can do on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> read, read, a read a book. A book. <laughs> Have you ever heard of one of those before? <laughs> Life hacks: ten <laughs> things you can do on a plane. <laughs> um, uh, books contain a wealth of knowledge <laughs> you can access during your nine hours of sitting. Do you so, read a lot right. of books? I do now. I never did before, mm. but it was about halfway through 2019. Mm -hmm. I what, suddenly what became a just... bookaholic. What, why? Oh, I don't know, something snapped. Well, I was I was um, doing lots of shows in China at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's funny because everyone on the management team is like, well, it's, you know, it's just, it's just like a three hour flight. Right, so it's right, nice right. and close. So you just do, it takes all day. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah right. Know. So you say three hour flight, but going to the airport alone is like a two, three hour flight. Yeah. So yeah. Going right. to the airport, then you, you know, get to the airport, go through all that at the airport, then yeah. the flight, then get off the plane or the stuff at the airport, then get to wherever you're going. It's a, like a 12 hour day process, yeah, yeah, a whole day, yeah, right? for sure. Um, and uh, so I just spent so much time on the planes. I've watched through all the movies of interest and you know, they only refresh them once every two months or something. Right, right, so right. Seven right. times you, you know. watch a Jason Statham film. You know? uh, <laughs> I, I watched plenty of those. I love Statham, he's a great man. Yeah. He's fast and furious, yeah. but um, I watched through all of those. And so, and so I switched to podcasts for a while. So mm -hmm. I'm daily podcasts and I'm just, hey, yeah. Yeah. Trash Taste yeah. Next time you catch a plane, <laughs> don't forget to download Trash Taste first. So I went through that and podcasts are kind of good because you kind of fall asleep with them and then mm. wake up and you kind of still 
all know what's going on, mm. sort of. But I got to a point when my ears were sore from the things in them too much. And right, I was like, right. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> so I discovered the magic of books. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now Did I'm you know that before <laughs> podcasts existed, people read these things called books. <laughs> books are awesome. So there's these things, right? It's called audio books, but it's w- just written down. It's, crazy. <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible. If you miss something or if you don't understand, you can go back and read just it. Just read again. it again. It's amazing. <laughs> it's so efficient. Oh yeah, so what kind of books are you reading? Uh, what am I reading at the moment? Um, like fiction, non-fiction? No, nah, non-fiction. Non-fiction, like speaking. autobiographies and stuff like that? Yeah, no, nah, nothing Nothing that people want to hear about. <laughs> <laughs> so there's nothing, just nothing interesting. I have a, a, a boring hobby. <laughs> And I read okay. books related to that boring hobby. I mean, you have such an intense job. Like yeah. I, I don't yeah. really put it past you to have a somewhat, you know, quote unquote boring hobby. I mean, I mean, mo- most people who are like, I feel like have like in- intense, you know, showmanship yeah. right. normally have like something that kind well, of- well, it's like, I mean, like brings them yeah. back yeah. down yeah. to the earth. Well, it's like people, you know, who like spend all day, every day going to like metal concerts, right? Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. you can't listen to metal at home. You gotta like, mm. you know, relax with some Enyo or something, right? There was like, a very successful, he was a, he was a quarterback in the NFL yeah. and he was like one of the most feared quarterbacks in the league when he was playing. Right. And uh, his hobby was to knit. <laughs> yeah. Great for so dexterity. So he was a gigantic, yeah. like 200 kilo man. <laughs> Knitting scarves for grandma and whatnot. Oh, it sounds like a that's very awesome. therapeutic. Yeah, uh, hobby. yeah. But that's what yeah. he said. He said it calmed him down. Yeah, yeah. What are your boring hobbies or interesting <laughs> hobbies? <laughs> Funnily enough, like because our job is a hobby, yeah. or it's right. started off as a yeah, hobby, yeah, yeah. right? I've we've had to like, I guess, try to find hobbies outside of hobbies. hobbies. Try yeah. new hobbies. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Because every hobby that, like, at least I've pursued, mm. I've somehow monetized it. Uh, yes. And it's kind of like turned into a job. <laughs> Not kind of the same thing. Everything that was once monetized. Once, once, once monetized. Everything that was once a passion for me is now the job. Right. So exactly. I know exactly what you're saying. Exactly. exactly. I just, so what, what do you do? What I mean, do you do? Definitely exercise for me okay, is good. definitely it. But I mean, you kind of. Conor McGregor. Oh, Conor McGregor. <laughs> We're not here to take part. We're here to take over. Oh, look at the Irish. Was, the fighting Irish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, well, well, Connor's not Irish. Irish. He's not even Irish. Irish. Well, I was, was going to say because I, I guess in some aspects, you you know, exercise for you probably is part of the job, of the right? Job. Yeah. 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 So I feel like for me, because I don't, you know, I don't really fucking need to do it. I just do yeah, it right. for me. It's very much that's like, great. What do you do? What do you do? Cardio and uh, lifting stuff. Good, good. Lifting weights like a monkey, I guess, good. feels like <laughs> you know, like a monkey. That's what it feels like. You know, you ever just feel like I'm just literally just lifting things, and, I, 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 I come, and I come back the next day, and I come back and lift things again. And sometimes I sit there and I'm thinking like, this is so bizarre. Yeah, why do we do this? Yeah, like, <laughs> no, I literally I, just come back and I just like, lift things and I, for an hour. Like Isn't I, it strange? I feel that way on the treadmill where you just yeah. feel like a fucking hamster, yeah. like going around the wheel. Yeah. It makes you feel great. So it's like, I need to do this. But sometimes I do have this existential crisis of like, what am I doing? I just, I just imagine I like I aliens coming down to earth being like, what do you humans do? I know, I, <laughs> we lift heavy <laughs> objects and feel <laughs> great about it. They're like, yeah. oh, okay, I guess. And then yeah, you go to the treadmill thinking that it's to generate electricity. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you do, wait. Well, we spend electricity <laughs> to make it work. It's like, you do this for fun? Yeah. I mean, yeah, personally, I just find that, you know, I'm not really trying to get like, you know, in, in any particular shape. I just find that I sleep better. I feel better mm. when I do it, you know, occasionally. It's very good for you. Yeah, Let's no, do yeah. some promotion of exercise. Yeah. Trash yeah, listeners, you should try exercising. <laughs> I feel like, you know, when I mention it, everyone's like, oh, he's trying to be like a Chad or some kind of meathead. It's like, no, it's just- you What's know a Chad? Chad? Oh my God. You don't you know what literally a Chad. Oh <laughs> you are a Chad. <laughs> Hang on, just a second. You're I feel like I'm supposed to be insulted. Okay, what the okay. Hell no, is no, 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 okay. no, no. Because no, I know so, that no. you people in the United Kingdom yeah. refer to a bogan as a chav. Is that a different- No, 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 you don't think of like the American guy in the film who's like yeah. the kind of bully kind of, you know. Like a jock? No, yeah, I, it's no, normally no, no. What he, that's normally where, that's where the meme came from. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, oh really? Like like a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of like American films like where the bully's like, always a Chad or yeah, something. Yeah, like literally. the jock in the high school oh, was always Chad. Or like Buddy or something yeah, like something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's where the meme came from. And that means like, uh, now it's kind of adopted into someone who's just like, uh, now it just means like, 
someone who I guess is- man Who exercises. No, 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 really, no, no, not no. even that. It's just, just kind of like a strong-willed man, I'd say at this like point. Like very right? high self-esteem, like, you know, yeah, like, hell yeah, I'm yeah, the yeah. shit yeah. kind just of- Just someone, know, someone, someone who exudes muscular. confidence. Is yeah. Joe Rogan a Chad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say he's a Chad. I would say he's a Chad. I feel like it used to just mean guy who's ripped and massive and it kind of like got blurred along the way to just like, yeah, like- Guy who exudes self-confident energy. But yeah, I, you know, a lot of sometimes people try and like mock, <laughs> mock them. <laughs> why, are you, why are you like- why, why are you so confused? You young people are appropriating names. Like it's not <laughs> well, but we have- Karen, that yeah. name's been <laughs> Now Chad, <laughs> we've already destroyed Susan. <laughs> sorry South African Susan for listening, sorry. Yeah, and then it started, what was it? It was the Chad versus the Virgin as well. Yeah, right? Chad yeah, versus yeah, the Virgin. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the, the Virgin was like the opposite of the yeah, Chad. Yeah, Someone yeah. who just was, Self-deprecating, like, yeah. perhaps. Low self-esteem. Low self-esteem. Yeah. Couldn't right. get girls. Yeah. That's a well, that's virgin. A virgin is typically pure and innocent and delightful. That's the, that's the Japanese, Japanese way yeah. of thinking yeah, yeah. about it. I, I would say that's the Japanese definition hey, of virgin. What, pure and delightful? No, yeah, pure think... and like, you know, untainted. That's yeah. everyone's idea of a virgin. No, not oh, on the internet. No, no. <laughs> The internet doesn't know what's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those those group of hive mind of every people from every country. <laughs> oh, they're talking about. No, I don't know what they're talking about. No, I don't know what Who's on the internet? <laughs> yeah, so you are- what are their hobbies? You can get to their hobbies Yeah, now. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, your so you are a hobbies. Chad. Um, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> you are officially certified Chad. Yes. You changed my name to Lady Chad. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, 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 if you want honestly. internet rebranding, it might work. Could work. Like, could work. Like, I didn't know I was Chad. Chad. No, you, you, know what, Chad. You, know, you know what that would be perfect for? That would be like a second channel name for a YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. Right? Chad. Your main, your main <laughs> like, channel is Lady B. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chad. Dude, this is wasted marketing. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, what's up, you fucking it's like, what's up, you fucking pussies? It's Lady <laughs> Chad. Today, <laughs> top 10 ways to lift. <laughs> uh, one of the joyous things mm. about being a, a crossdresser and a martial artist mm -hmm. is I uh, probably Chad's actually when I was younger, jocks and the kind of dudes who wanted to fight, mm -hmm. they would come and they would want to fight the crossdresser straight away. Of course. Mm -hmm. of course. Right. Since I'm a martial artist, right. it's a beautiful thing <laughs> when a man in a skirt knocks out a Chad <laughs> <laughs> with a jumping spin kick. <laughs> That's a thing of beauty. You just get Chun-Li on awesome. their ass, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. It was good, it was good. So, it was okay, good. so like, that's the other thing I wanted to ask as well is about like the, the martial arts because I don't think we got like fully into how you developed or you decided to kind of do that as mm. like a, a thing. I still want to find out about like, hobbies later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I want to know. There's so many things I want to ask actually. Yeah, yeah, but like, so like, so like, how did you grow? So obviously, you know, you grew appreciation towards wrestling through watching WWE and yeah. stuff like that, right? Yeah. So is that kind of the same thing with martial arts as well? Oh, uh, with martial arts, I, um, you know, I was, I uh, took an interest in it from a young age. You know, I think like probably like potentially you and yourself as well bullied a lot as a child, mm -hmm. younger sibling. I'm an older sibling. I'm the middle, oh, I'm you, the middle you sibling. He doesn't have siblings. I, I am an only uh, child. Well, you're spoiled, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, everybody hail the elephant god. No siblings, two oh, well. I, I love how, I love how, I love how the one person you didn't point at is the younger sibling. The, the younger uh, sibling. The other middle I'm child. A, middle, yeah. Middle, middle. High five middle child. Yeah, wait, are you middle or <laughs> I'm three in the lineup of four. Oh, so yeah, I'm the same. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we both got red beards. Ah, 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 me and Connor. Hey, Connor beard. You're basically, you you're basically the same person. We are, we are, you're Welsh me, not in a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> not quite, it is uh, <laughs> cushy, I don't think. A bit lacking in that department. It's, it's like the Pokemon evolution. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> like I can see the meme on Reddit already. You take one of your cosplay videos. It's evolving. Of course, this is Somebody awesome. make that on the summer. Uh, this is awesome. Anyway, martial arts. How it martial began, how it's going. <laughs> <laughs> you versus the guy talking not to worry about. <laughs> uh, oh anyway, martial arts. Yeah, martial so arts. I bullied a lot and mm -hmm. I liked the Karate Kid movies. You got bullied? Too young. Yeah, man, I was a, I was a fat kid. Oh, okay. really? Yeah, so you, you're not, no one's ripped in school. Yeah. 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 Except, that, <laughs> except that one kid who's really thin and has abs. Fuck that kid. <laughs> It sucks. Eats pizza, drinks it's beer all day, it. still got and his six pack. <laughs> Somehow still has abs. Ain't right, God ain't right. God, they say God doesn't have favorites, bullshit. Man. So what like martial arts did you take up? I started in Taekwondo mm -hmm. and then I went into Capoeira. Oh wow. Then I went into Muay Thai 
And then from there, the floodgates opened. I went to Jeet Kune Do, Kali, Freestyle Grappling, Hup Kido. Who teaches you? Where did you find the time to do that? How, how long does it take to learn a martial arts? Or did you just like dabble in it and learn no, what no, you need no. to do? No, no, no. I mean, it's... um. I oh, hear that? That's not good. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that was bad broadcast. That's, that's okay. That's all right. It's all good. Um, no, you, know, you start training. It's, look, the thing about training is it's just the thing that you do, isn't it? It's mm. like yeah. I started training Taekwondo. They had Taekwondo at school. Mm. And so then on Friday after school was the thing that I did. Just went did Taekwondo. Yeah, Taekwondo. but you also listed off about like nine different types of martial <laughs> yeah. arts. So you, so you start, list off you start every training. single martial arts. Yeah. Yeah. You start training yeah. and you, you know, develop your skills and you develop an interest. Yeah. And so then you get exposed to other martial arts. Right, right. And you say, that looks interesting. Looks interesting because you have a space of comparison now mm. with what you're learning and what they seem to be learning. Mm. So now you can say, all right, well, that looks interesting. It looks like something that could help with what I'm trying to achieve. Right, right, and right. So then you kind of end up expanding, right? So what right. would you say is like your... <laughs> favorite type i guess or like, well, like one that you learn from the most well like taekwondo is my first love mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so that's kind of the one and also because i did it when i was the youngest it's the one that stuck in my body the most easily how young were you when you did taekwondo started at 13 13 wow okay yeah and this is the thing like i got flexible before mm. i became a teenager and my flexibility was naturally taken away right, right so right, that's right. allowed me to stay flexible i can still do the mm. high kicks and the splits and mm. everything. yeah wow. um you do splits Oh my God. I'll do them on this table if you want. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I added if you want. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, so uh, yeah, start in Taekwondo. Can't remember the rest of the question. <laughs> just, just wondering okay, how you what started, what yeah. Martial arts, I mean, is, is, I wonder, what is there like a scale of like, this martial arts is more useful than this one? Because like, well, I've seen in like a bunch of other stuff that there's just so many martial arts that seem like they're like, or not almost I actually are fake or like mm, that they're yeah. not, you know, that I, is that controversial to say? I don't know if that uh, is. It's, well, look, this uh, debate has raged in the martial right, arts right. community oh, since really? the dawn okay, of time. No so yeah. this is, everyone has an opinion on this. Really? Right. It's, and now that we've got, you know, competitive mixed martial arts, everyone, the consensus seems to be Muay Thai for your striking, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for your grappling. Mm. But then you got to understand as well, that's sport in a cage when there are rules. Right. Yeah. So right. then in if there's no rules, if you're in war, or self-defense in the street or something, mm. yeah. then you have systems like Krav Maga, which is all based around murder, Killing. basically. Right, yeah. right. <clears throat> so like, <clears throat> there are other styles, like uh, particular Kung Fu styles where you never do anything except strike the eyes and the throat and the groin. You know, that's literally all you do in the whole <laughs> Jesus. art, right? Oh so, my God. So it all just, there's no, uh, in my opinion, there's no best system or anything. It just depends what you're doing with it. Right, right. And there are the different, you know, different round pegs to fit into round holes and square pegs for square holes. And mm. like you that. ever done MMA? Uh, no, I've trained MMA. I haven't fought. I was actually interested in fighting. We were going to do it a couple of years ago. I actually started training for it. Oh, oh really? I finally found a thing this man hasn't done yet. Okay. <laughs> I, start, I started training for it, but it just became apparent that it was like on a on a cost benefit ratio. It, it just right. wasn't really yeah. wasn't really good. Mm. Well, there's a lot that goes into it, right? I was going to need a good two years of consistent training to mm. properly get my skills back. All right. Yeah. to where they need to be for fighting. But then also you got to consider, okay, so what weight am I going to fight at? Am right. I going to do a big weight cut? Let's say I do that. Then afterwards, okay, well now that's going to affect my wrestling because now I'm skinny. Right, right. right. But then right. also let's say I do the fight and it goes well. Well, then what does that really lead to? More opportunities to fight. I don't really want to be a professional fighter, mm. you know, but now I've organized my whole life for that sake. Right. So, right, you know, right, and right. yeah, and like... Then, and that's if the fight goes well. If the fight goes badly, I just look like a, <laughs> like a moron, don't I? I need plastic surgery. You know, I probably need maybe yeah, to go back yeah, home. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. You trained for two years to get publicly beaten right, up. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. God, that's tough. Yeah. So I thought about it actually. I've trained MMA and I really right. like the training. I was I was interested in fighting. Well, what's like the difference between out. training MMA and training just a normal martial arts? Um, <laughs> well, MMA, it's everything mixed together, right? right. Mm. But also you have quite a Well, you've a done specific, so many already, right? So Yeah, but you've got quite a specific like rule set in MMA that must be followed. You know, you're fighting in either a cage or a ring. Mm. Right. So it's built for that environment. Mm -hmm. So in MMA, you do a lot of work against walls. So there's a lot mm. of grappling against walls because right, right. you naturally have a wall that you're going to meet at some point right. in the fight. Yeah. And you can't go further than that, right? Right. But then, you know, if you were fighting in the desert, that would not be the case. You see what I mean? Mm. Right. <clears throat> so it is a specific rule set. So you train for that rule set and for the skill set required for that environment. Okay. Whereas like, mm. if you're going to do like street self-defense or something, depends on 
What attitude That's do you want to take? Because I've always wanted to get into martial arts, but I I didn't know What's... which martial arts to start with, basically. Because right. there's, there's, there's so I'll many. Train you. You'll yeah, train sure. You. Is, there, is, there, is there is there like a is there I guess like a kind of a difficulty or is there like I assume a you know difficulty curve. Well, 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 no, no, it's not much <laughs> difficulty curve. Tutorial martial arts. <laughs> well, well, it's more like you know just like what just test the button. What okay? is like that? What is like the easiest <laughs> type of martial arts to get into if you have like no prior knowledge in it? Right, because I assume there are some martial arts where it's like you need I to have like some base level of martial yeah. arts. Because no, yeah. they're all systems. And right. so when you start training the system, you start at the beginning. Right, right. So no one's going to put you So in. there's no like type of martial art where it's like you need to have like prior knowledge of there's no basic ten, kung fu. There's no 10 hit combo that you need to no. memorize. <laughs> <laughs> um, there would be for particular like particular forms, not the art itself, but right. particular training environments. Like right. if you want to go to this guy's school, you need to have 10 years experience or whatever. Oh, right? so, okay, okay. But okay. not for the art itself, no. Right, right. Oh. Straight up, if you're jumping into, you know, expert level when you're a beginner, then you're just making a silly decision. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> like moving on from martial arts, mm. stuntman. Mm. What does that involve? Well, how, okay, how do you train so, for that? What, yeah. was, what, do you, what do you do on the Dude, job? Freaking stunts is bonkers, man. Being a stuntman is a tough gig. Oh yeah, okay. I bet. Um, <laughs> all right, so for me, I was a like actor, so performer yeah. and martial artist. So those two things just naturally Stunt evolve man. into stunts yeah, yeah, and yeah, pro yeah. wrestling eventually, right? But dude, stunts is hard. Firstly, you gotta decide, you know, are you just gonna do stunts? Like what I did was, you know, punching and kicking and falling down, basically. Mm, right. So it was fight scenes. But then stunts also includes cars, you know, boats because getting some, set on fire, things yeah, like that, right? Yeah, like <laughs> people's, some stuntmen have to like flip the cars over a while, yeah. like, innit? Which is yeah, just yeah. like- That's mm. a whole new skill set, right? Yeah. yeah. So it really like, it, you know, it's saying, what about stunts? It's kind of like saying, how long is a piece of string? There's so many oh. different things you can do. Yeah. You can be like falling off buildings and so things. So what was like some of the stuff that you did? So for me, I was doing fight scenes, right? Right. right. Um, so like I trained in uh, you know, the Hong Kong style of action mm. and <clears throat> my, Master, I shouldn't call him a master, the guy who was training me, mm. um, he was on Jackie Chan's stunt team throughout the 90s and noughties. Mm. So he did movies like he did a couple of the Rush Hours, he did Shanghai Noon. Oh, wow. He did some Damn. of the smaller Hong Kong ones like The Twins Effect. Mm. Okay. Kind of movies, right? Um, but like <sighs> the way they work in Hong Kong is like, I should stop saying like so much. That's not good. You say less than us. Yeah. yeah. The way they like, Oh my god! <laughs> the attitude. Okay, the slogan of the the slogan of the Hong Kong Stuntman Association. Right. He told me when he was in it, risk life, save money. <laughs> so that's the kind of attitude you're wow. dealing with. Wow! It's no if, bullshit. If you this do, I've never had a harder teacher in my life. This yeah. dude was so tough. Right. It's like you're expected to backflip off a balcony whilst on fire into a pool of broken glass. And if you're like a little bit hesitant, he's like, no, no, you're so weak. What's wrong with you? That, Harden up, that is, Harden up. That is the ultimate chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a psychopath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the stunts attracts kind of this type A personality. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was like, he was telling me stories about when he was back in Australia, he was from Melbourne. Mm. Yeah. We're in Australia before he went to Hong Kong was with Jackie. Mm -hmm. right. And just the stuff he did just as a thing to do was bonkers. Well, like, like as a hobby. <laughs> no, sorry, as a hobby, but like he'd kind of do it towards stunts, sort of. But he was like, one day we oh, were driving past a train station in Melbourne. And you know, there's like the bridge that goes over the train yeah, track. Yeah. And then there's like a pole sticking up like 10 meters away from it or something. Yeah. With pole with the dingy dongy lights on it or something. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, so yeah, when, when I was younger, before I went to Hong Kong, I was going to jump off the bridge onto the pole. Yeah, I was going to do that. Yeah, we didn't have a camera at the time. so <laughs> I'm like, what? I was like, yeah, I was going to jump off. <laughs> what? I was like- well, just, just for fun. Just 10 just, meter jump from this bridge on, to catch a pole. Just, yeah. To just, be like, just, I did it. <laughs> so just just like, because. Here's a, here's a thing to do. I think his attitude was he would film it and right, then right. Be part of his stunt show reel. Right, right. I think that right. was his attitude. Right. But that's the kind of people, like just fearless men. You so know? you're doing mm. stupid and shit women. like jumping off buildings into like glass. Yeah, how'd you, how'd you, how'd you <laughs> where, how, Yeah, where did you draw I the did line? Cause I'm not that talented. Right. Other people talented. did. What, what talent no, no, no. you need? Dude, I mean, you, like how'd you train for that? Well, that's what well, I want to like, know. Like there's a, 
natural level of talent that's required. So the guys mm. who become career stuntmen are generally speaking the kids who were, you know, the fastest runners in school. The kids who are naturally very physically Athletic, right, yeah. right, right. naturally very. Uh, I'm not. I was a fat kid at school, mm. so I've got a level of skill just because I trained, but I don't have the natural talent for it. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. These guys, man, like I've got friends <laughs> who now are uh, doing the stunts in all the uh, like the Marvel films and so forth. Right. right. Okay. And they're just, just. The moment they were born, they were better than me after a hundred years of training. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like my couple of teachers. That guy can like, just throw himself off a building <laughs> so goddamn. Yeah. Like I wish they, that were me. It's like they <laughs> back flipped out of the womb <laughs> <laughs> with a six pack and a charming smile. You know? It's like just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Oh my goodness. God. Yeah, so it's like that's the level of natural talent that's required. Mm, but also right. when you get to that level, a lot of them just just like crazy. A type A personality. Yeah. 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 You have to be. You can't. You, you can't be, like. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Like, yeah. 100%. If you're willing to be hit by a car, you know, like just stand mm. there. We're gonna drive a car into you. Okay. Oh, good take. Good take. <laughs> was that good? Was that good? We can do. Alright, do it again. Do it again. It's just on the of, ground, legs broken. Was that good? A lot of wrestlers as well. It's mm. like you know. Okay. So it's funny when we're pro wrestlers. You're backstage in the locker room. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. normally so mellow. Yeah. And we're just like, oh, I want to go to Yeah. <laughs> oh, I go to so chilled out. And then okay, so we'll go into the ring, and um, yeah, about three minutes in or so, you can um. Hit me with the baseball bat. <laughs> wrapped up in barbed wire. I'm like, he's like, mm. they hit me with it here last week. It's still healing, so you better hit me with it here. <laughs> really? Are you sure? That's what you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Let's take a quick break for this one minute break. And we'll be right back on the voice of Africa Radio Network. It's funny because wrestlers will be in the locker room and they're all, oh, oh, and they're taping up knees and things. They're like, oh. They go out to the ring and it's and they're superheroes. Yeah. Right? They go back and they're all bleeding and everything. More blood everywhere. More so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, stunt people and pro wrestlers. It's, it's what a life. What a life. What a life, eh? <laughs> Credits <gimmick>. roll. <laughs> what a gimmick. Um, I mean, I, mean I, I suppose like pro wrestlers is just a natural evolution of stuntmen, mm. right? I because felt that way. because mm. it's just like way. it's more controlled stunts and you yeah. add a narrative to it. I felt that way. And mm. also, the guys who tend to go into stunts seem to be much more like talented with the physical stuff. And I was better at the character performance type right, stuff. Right, right, so right. for me, it seemed like a much more natural evolution. Right, right. What are some of the craziest stunts you've had to do? Uh, um. Well, I wasn't that good, so I didn't get to do that much amazing right, stuff. Right. Right. Jumping off balconies, done some of that. It's not that hard. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to jump off a balcony personally. How tall are we talking here? Not that tall. Like, Wait, how, like how? A second story kind of. Thing. <laughs> not that tall. <laughs> it's, that tall. I, it's still pretty tall. I wouldn't do it. My trainer was like, "You're weak. You're such a sissy." <laughs> He's doing like 20 stories of things, you know, it's just insane. This is um, how real chat yeah. does it. Oh my God, man. It was never good enough. Some, some people are just like cockroaches, right? They just can't die. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like, like, honestly, like, honestly, it's like insane. Oh, no. In pro wrestling, I hit over the head with one of those fluorescent light tubes. Right. That was good. That actually doesn't hurt, but it does cut you. So <laughs> you end up bleeding. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, That's very awesome. Uh, have you ever gotten injured or anything like that? Like properly injured. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I've probably been concussed, but didn't realize. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. How do you not, how do you no, not I, realize? I don't know what you're again, saying, unfortunately. Yeah, I, <laughs> if I get concussed, I immediately realize. <laughs> do you really, though? There's no, something about don't, concussion. You don't. You really? Know what's going on. No. That's the whole thing of concussion. You don't know what's going on. Right. So you need someone to stop you and be like, you're concussed. We need to do the whatever happens Touché. after concussion. Okay. Touché. We need to do what people who've done a first aid course. Right, right, right. Because right. like people who play American football like never know they're yeah. concussed. Exactly. And they, they go straight back on the field. Oh, jeez. I think it's like they have like the most I think they die early because they have so much brain damage. Right. They're just hitting their head constantly. They don't, but they don't know. So it's the same with MMA fighters. Right, from in right, training, right. just getting jabbed, just getting little punches. They get like compounded brain damage from that. Oh, it's wow, not right. from getting knocked out. It's from just little shots over. Right, 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 right. Um, anyway, so light over the head, broken glass. Oh, sorry, not broken glass. Barbed wire. Did some of that. Uh, like Jesus. <laughs> yeah, 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 I did in that first. Yeah. Hit with a shovel. I uh, got hit in the head with a shovel. <laughs> you got hit in the head with a shovel? It's, it was a great weapon. Like how how hard weapon. are we talking? Like <sighs> just like a little like yeah. boop or? Because, because like, uh, boom! <laughs> it's oh, a great weapon. But if you hit it with the concave side, it's not that bad on your skull. The right. convex side would really mess you up. Oh yeah. Concave yeah. side, you know, 
folds onto your skull. So right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But like to control that, right, in the swing would be, I, I feel it'd be so, a lot harder yeah, than yeah, it looks. Because, because like the, there's an image of pro wrestling that, you know, pro wrestling is fake and everything like that. But obviously the stunts are real. Like mm. how hard do you have to go for all the stunts that you do in pro wrestling? Oh, it depends. Dep it depends on. Depends so like when, on when, you. So like, for I example, mean, you should give it hell, really. So, so when you're saying the shovel, right? In my mind, my immediate thought is: guy swings shovel, tries his best to stop it, but it still hits you. Is that what's happening, or no. or is he literally going no. like, "I'm going to hit you with the hit shovel"? Hit me as hard as you can. Bang. Because <laughs> I guess, because I guess, Why? like the audience needs to hear the sound, right? Yeah, they hear the sound, and also yeah. it's you know, like just, just get someone on a soundboard in the back. Also, the you <laughs> want to do it when you're when you're wrestling. You want to do it, you know. It's, yeah. There's an element really? of mm, come on, you know. No, I don't. That's why. <laughs> that's why you I'm not a Chad. pro wrestler. That's why I'm not a pro wrestler. Yeah, 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 I am yeah, a version. Yeah. Yeah. Chad, Chad versus the version. I, will, Chad, I, will, I, will I think you're making version. anyone listening to this sound like a virgin. I'm like, <laughs> no, we, we are all virgins. Frankly, frankly, I don't want to be hitting that <laughs> shot. That is, you know. I used to love it. It's yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's a young man's game. It's, it's a young man's you game. You talk about this like it's like a pastime. You know, I used to love it. I feel like why is it you know when a kid says that it's like oh god this kid's going nowhere. When an adult says it, wow he's such a manly. <laughs> I feel like if, if, if my son comes up to me, age five, daddy, I love being hit in the head by a shovel. I'll be like, oh, I dropped you one too many times. Oh, it's God, like, this kid. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, no, nah, it's, you know, oi, Chad's dig it. <laughs> is, is, it just the, is it just the sheer manly energy and the testosterone going around? Yeah. It's just like, just hit, fucking hit me. I mean, yeah, I guess once you're on the stage, it's like, yeah. there's I like, get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the adrenaline there's going on. There's the adrenaline, on, right? and there's mm. something uh, somehow emotionally satisfying with it as well. So, from an acting standpoint, acting mm. is all emotion and so forth. Mm -hmm. so, right, right, right. right. Um, wrestling is the most emotional work I've ever done. Because there's imagine, so much yeah. emotion involved in. Oh, it's being real! Hit. It's real! Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah it's exactly. real! Yeah, yeah. So it's highly emotional, and there's something satisfying about it. Mm. It's you know, like I say, it's a young man's game. It's you, you want to be doing that in your twenties. Well, yeah, I think I. Right. What was it like the John Oliver thing on the WWE? I think I watched that, and it was what? saying that they're like they're all contractors in WWE. Yeah. They're not. Oh, employees. really? Yeah, yeah. So they're they're all they're contractors that can't work for anyone else. Okay. Oh wow. And then you know once they're done, they don't really get much health benefits or anything. So a lot of them end up you know being really injured later on. Right. Right. Like, right, see ya. That's yeah. getting fixed nowadays. I hope so, yeah, 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 yeah. Back in the day, lots of that. Um, but you know, there's something satisfying about it. I had, this was not, you know, really dangerous, but we found, you know, those plastic wet floor signs that go into a triangle? <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Those yeah. are fantastic weapons. Oh yeah, I mean, Because yeah. when you hit someone with them, the two pieces of plastic clap together. So it makes a really loud noise. Doesn't hurt. So it doesn't hurt. Yeah. So you go crack. Crack, crack, he hit right. someone in the head with it over and over again. So I did that in a match once, it was great. I got <laughs> hit in the head a bunch of times. Right. Hey, we did this 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 spot. Then later on, I'm going home, I'm on the train, and there's some like young girl next to me. She sits down next to me. She's like, okay. uh, and I'm like, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> and she's, she's like, oh my, I'm just, oh my God. I think she got up and like changed seats or something. And I was like, hmm, that was odd. And then like we got off at the station and I walked past some reflective surface. And I'm not talking about this. I, we walked past some reflective surface. My whole like face had turned purple. The whole oh, thing was purple. Yeah. Jesus. Like mega mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm having a casual chat. It's a nice evening, isn't it? Huge <laughs> 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 purple face. You're just scaring all the Japanese people from foreigners. They're like, fucking hell, these foreigners are fucking weird. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. I did a gimmick with fire once, but that wasn't that wasn't bad from a pain perspective. That, that was bad. Well, well, we well, almost well, burned. Well, 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 you said it wasn't bad from a pain perspective. Yeah. What was it bad? Okay, what, what perspective one, was it bad in? From one, one, an insurance perspective. <laughs> right. That's the perspective from which it was bad. <laughs> right. From the, yeah, yeah. you'll never wrestle in this building again perspective. Oh, right, right, right. I mean, right. doing anything with fire, most 90% of the time requires some kind of safety. Fire warden type <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We just started what? dueling. We just we, thought <laughs> swords would be fantastic. We, we, had had a, <laughs> we had a stick with a cloth wrapped around it that been drenched in gasoline or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, no, we were safe. We had a bucket of water next to the ring. 
A that's single yeah. bucket. That's not how. That's not how fire works. <laughs> so there, there's a there's a fire truck right there. The bucket of water. The piss bucket on the side. <laughs> I've just gone on stage and take taken your like insurance insurance like and just set just that, set one, that fire, one. Man. Uh, young we, had people. A, we had a thing one time with just needles, reused needles. I just thought it would be a great bit. Yeah. <laughs> there's a shower at the facility. I just I just wash it off. Yeah, in Japan, that's what most of them are like. The death. But the death mat death match workers in Japan. Right. That's what they're like. They'll go into the ring, be bleeding everywhere, and afterwards, oh I got the wizard I must. And they go and just have a shower and wash it off. Like, Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, yeah. So you go to the shower afterwards, there's yeah. blood everywhere all over the shower floor. <laughs> oh my god. Like, god damn. God damn. damn. There's only yeah. two times when there's like a shit ton of blood in a shower and that's at a wrestling match and prison. <laughs> oh my god. Oh Jerry. my god. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll leave that up to your imagination. Mm. <laughs> anyway, I was not thinking that. <laughs> I just, not what I, I was going to say. That is, is my second a, I did not expect that joke from uh, from Joey. No, I did not see that coming as well. <laughs> How long you been holding that joke in? It's like finally I get it's to like, say wait, it. How long you been waiting the, to use the that? perfect setup? <laughs> He's been holding um, on to that joke for years. Yeah, it's like I never found a place to say it. Today's the day. She's <laughs> short shank <laughs> I did it. I've hung out with you so many times just mm. on a personal level, but like I guess like we never really go into like as Talk deeply shop. as what we mm. what, what you do, right? So it's like I don't know. I mean, I for one have never met. A pro wrestler who is also a metal singer, who is also a cross dresser, who also is a stunt man. <laughs> no, have just we missed out anything? A martial artist, a martial as artist as well. Uh, what voice a, actor, voice actor, voice actor. Messiah as well. <laughs> <laughs> Savior of mankind. <laughs> let me tell you about the time I split the Red Sea. <laughs> uh, let me ask you some questions. Okay. okay. Um, at what age did you begin mm. your and one may person uh, activities? Han, 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 you mean my YouTube channel? Yeah. Uh, I was oh. God, it's 2013, so I was 19. You were 19? Yeah. How old are you now? 26. Are you? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were, okay. How old did you think I was? Uh, well, younger than that, but thinking about it, I met you in 2016 when you were like 21 or something. Yeah, yeah. So I, was like 20, I, still, I was like 22, 23. To me, you're eternally 21. Forever 21. <laughs> forever 21. Forever 21. Is not quite forever, is it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, like. I think it's saying, so university. Yeah, so it was my first year of university. Okay. I started as like a hobby. And then by the time I graduated university, I was like, oh, I, I can make this a living. Ass kicking. Cool. What'd you study at uni? I did, uh, it was this degree called design computing, which is basically like, think of a bachelor of arts, but more technology based. That sounds- So I learned like uh, like music production. I learned uh, like 3D modeling, graphic design, website design, all that kind of stuff. But surely that's coming useful in this life. Well, know? yeah, cause I learned video editing from one of the courses as well. So I was like, oh, I like video editing. That's banging. Yeah. I'm no longer the host of this show now. <laughs> this is Lady Bid featuring Trash Taste. In the voice of Ifrika. <laughs> Lady Bid. Let's be honest. It was Lady Beard featuring Trash Taste from, oh, like, from the beginning. From the very <laughs> beginning. Let me ask another question, actually. Mm -hmm. Aussie, Brit, Brit. Yeah. Mm. Got the fucking ashes right here, man. Explain the the choice of this American word trash in your name. Why is but not well, the podcast called the Rubbish Rebel? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we have to cater to Americans um, with almost everything in our life. Really. Well, it's also because trash taste is kind of a term a that we term. use in uh, like the anime community. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So Tell like, if, if somebody has trash taste, it means oh. like, oh, you know, you you're into like the the crappier shows and like yeah. the more guilty pleasure type of shows. Oh, you have trash taste in anime. We haven't spoken about anime at all. We haven't. Have I you watched anime? That. Do you watch anime? Yeah. Let me explain my anime bit. Go for it. Okay. So I used to be uh, quite, an anime. A, quite <laughs> an anime fan, uh -huh. um, but I had to switch all my content over to things that would help with my language learning, as opposed to watching for the sake of leisure. Right. Right. So for the past three years, my prime watching of anime has consisted of Peppa Pig dubbed into Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched Mandarin Peppa wow. Pig. I used wow. to watch it every morning. I didn't I'd even know up, there was a Mandarin Peppa Pig. I'd wake up and I'd put on Peppa Pig and Mandarin. Right. Yeah. And, and, you, and that's how you learn Mandarin. The idea was when my brain waves were still whatever they are when you're sleeping, right. like whatever, I'd absorb the language at that point. Mm, so right. I used to listen to it going to sleep and then also waking up. That was my strategy. 
Wow. And also Peppa Pig, because it's um, a children's show, means the language is nice and, you know, basic. Yeah. Easy to yeah, understand. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Normal life language as opposed to slaying dragons and stuff that happens yeah, in yeah. more yeah. interesting anime. Right. And also the voices are recorded in the studio, so they're crisp and easy to hear. Mm. So, yeah, so. Yeah, actually, that's one question I wanted to ask. How did you learn Japanese? Japanese, well, I- Because I'm sure many people watching this podcast would like to know that. Um, I don't recommend you learn Japanese the way I did. What I recommend you do is you go get the school, get the teachers, get right. the books, just do it the traditional way. There's a big push in the language learning community to not do that anymore. Right. That's what has worked for thousands of years. That's, <laughs> that's why it is the system. Wait, just why is there a push the to not do that? Because everyone's like, no, you should make learning fun. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. <laughs> learning should be boring and tedious and you should <laughs> bash your way through it with your teacher and your exercises because right. that's how you actually build the language properly from mm. the ground up. Mm. What I did was I got Pimsleur's Japanese right. and I would, you know, I went through those programs and stuff. And then I did some lessons with a tutor, but it was pretty haphazard. Mm. I turned up in Japan and just tried to figure it out. Just no one around me spoke right, English. So right, I tried right. to figure it out. But now, now, seven years into that journey, mm. now my Japanese is full of holes and grammatical problems mm. and things that Shiori is now trying to fix. So it's now much harder to go back and fix bad habits. Right, right. And this just start our problem. <clears throat> so right. that's why I recommend do that. You grew up speaking it. Yes, it's my first language technically. Is it really? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't really participate in the learning conversation. How did you no. flogs learn it? I mean, we're still, flogs, still, still, still learning. We're still learning. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Are you really? Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, I mean unfortunately- Oh, it won't be Daijobu for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, Sorry, audience. Yeah. Good point. You pulled that back quickly. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> well, I know. Well, I mean, Connor goes to classes. Uh, no, you don't go to classes, no. right? Yeah. I, I mean, it's- it's been hard because you, there's no way to get around it without putting time into it. Yeah. And time is, I feel like the hardest find, the hardest thing to find as an adult because yeah. everyone I've talked to who's learned Japanese, no matter what way they went through, what path they went through, there's no getting around just putting the hours into yes, it. Yes, yeah. yes. And it's like difficult in our situation because with our situation, you know, we've, it's different from your situation because we can we can go about our day and just not speak any Japanese yes. at all and be completely yes. fine with it because yes. we work from home. Um, so it goes down to having to find time outside of your schedule to like learn Japanese. Yeah, because I'm sure if Gant and Connor were thrown into a situation where like you're stuck in this village in Japan where not a single person can speak English. So you just have to get, you know, make your way through it by trying to speak as much Japanese as possible. I'm sure anybody in that situation would be like, all right, I guess I got to start yeah, speaking yeah, Japanese, yeah, yeah. right? That's one it, option. It's, it's unfortunate because I mean, it, I mean, it's obviously great that we have so much work to do and that, you know, it, mm. it does, it is so successful because, yeah. you know, I, I would love to take a year off and just do nothing yeah. and learn it. I'd love to do that as well. Unfortunately, it makes literally no sense right now to do that because, mm. you know, oh. everything's going so well. Sure, oi, I reckon if I had control of your schedule, I could get your Japanese learning stuck in there. <laughs> <laughs> Lady you gotta, the, the, the assistant. You gotta be um, ruthless about it. You gotta yeah. find yeah. little windows, little windows of time where mm. you can slip it in. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, you, the things like first thing in the morning. Yo, get Peppa Pig dubbed into Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm not joking. That's great because you can see mm. the situation situations they're going through are so basic mm. and every day this is my mom this is my dad yeah, yeah, we're yeah. kicking a ball you know yeah, mm. yeah. go through that that's gonna teach you properly then mm. also get your damn books and your teachers in your class how many pe how i just how many seasons were pepper pig <laughs> it's not like, that many <laughs> <is it? laughs> how, how long before you started learning japanese to the point where you were like all right i'm pretty pretty fluent now being in Japan, it was one year before I was not a total more anymore. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Two years before I felt somewhat competent, mm -hmm. but I'd say five years before I really feel like I can- Talk to anyone, talk about anything. Yeah, but I don't even really still feel I can do that. You know? right, right. right, right. If I don't know someone, they start doing something like weird, like talking Kego. Mm. See you later. I can't talk <laughs> See you later, man. That's like a different language. Oh, yeah, they start is, pulling yeah. out Kansai Ben. I'm like, who's this jackass? <laughs> <laughs> what you doing talking to me like some Kansai person? Oh yeah, I mean like, you know, Kego, I guess it's like, you know, everybody everywhere in Japan, you know, usually, you know, uses it. But when it comes to different dialects, mm. like even yeah. I'm sometimes completely lost Wait, if I'm in the yeah, middle of well, It's not very right? confident inspiring when you talk to natives and they're like, I don't know what they're saying. And I'm like, mm. what the fuck am I supposed yeah. to say? Like Kansai yeah. Ben, right? Is like, because you hear it so much on TV and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like one dialect where I'm like, okay, yeah, I can kind of figure out what you're saying. Right. But if I'm in like, you know, Okinawa mm. or, like, say Okinawa. or like or like Hokkaido or like middle of nowhere in Hokkaido, uh, all right, yeah. then I'll be like, 
I think you're speaking Japanese, but I couldn't tell you what the fuck you're saying. Did you have to? So you grew up speaking Japanese. Yeah. But did you have to, were there parts of the language you needed to study, like particles or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, absolutely. So like I did um, the JLPT. Okay. Um, ah. Which is like the Japanese language proficiency test. Yeah. Um, and I got N1, which is the highest level. I had to study for that. Uh, I got that when I was like 14, I think. What a badass. 14, 15. Yeah. But I studied like fucking crazy for Good that. Good man, yeah. see, study, study. Yeah. Yeah. No, people. that's the thing. No. People think that like, oh, fluent people, or you know, people who have it as their first language have it easy because mm. you don't have to study. No, that's complete bullshit. Like mm. you have yeah. to study just as hard as everybody else if you want to get good at mm. it. Yeah, because yeah. the thing is you also, you, saw, you also said you speak five languages as well, mm. Mm. which right. is, like, so what, fuck English, me for one, but, five but, languages. Yeah, yeah, fluent in English, half asked it, another four. Yeah, what, <laughs> what, what are the four? What are the four you speak? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Japanese, mm -hmm. Cantonese, mm -hmm. Mandarin, mm -hmm. German. Ge oh, German. German. I learned German in high school. Oh, you okay. remember it? Yeah, but it's been. It's, but I haven't spoken it for a long time. <laughs> right, okay. right, right. I went there on exchange, so I got that native exposure. Right. right, right yeah. Right. But now mm. I'm just big time out of practice. Mm. Right. So right, if right. I start trying to talk, I would need like if you dump me at a German village somewhere, mm. yeah. I'd get it back you know, a month or two, maybe. Yeah. Right. 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 But I'd need to go through remembering a lot of vocab, mm. specific bits of grammar, how it works. Mm. Interestingly, German grammar is not that different from Japanese grammar. Yeah, a, you, would, a lot of Eastern yeah. European languages actually are kind of similar to that, yeah. Would you say that after you learned your first language, it was like way easier to learn other languages? Because no. that's what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> See, because I've heard that that's the thing. Like I've heard, because my, my granddad could speak seven languages <laughs> fluently. I, he, think, I think you just learn what system works for you. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But like, I've also heard that like Pepe languages <laughs> are a lot similar to instruments where the second one is always the hardest oh, and then it gets easier and easier because you, every, with every new thing you learn, you use your base knowledge from the previous thing you've learned I see. to kind of build upon it. So it's, it's like, oh, this is a completely new language, but I already know a language that has kind of the same base sentence structure or mm. same vocabulary rules as this one. I have found that to mess me up. Because oh, really? now I'm just confused. Oh. Now I'm going into, <laughs> let's say if I'm going from like Japanese to Mandarin, yeah. now I'm trying to do Mandarin grammar, but I'm instinctively picking Japanese words. Right, you know right. Saying? Yeah. Not that head, Ashley, good man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ashley knows what's up. I imagine she already is nodding the head. I can't see her past the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so, but hang on, but you watch anime for like a thousand hours a day. Yeah, Surely I mean, something no, comes from that. No, they, no. That's, that's a fallacy, I, right? I never ever intended to learn Japanese. Yeah, right? same I, when, I, when I was like, you know, 17, 18, I thought, oh, it's cringe to want to learn Japanese from anime. Mm. Oh, look then, at this guy! Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, honestly. Oh. No, yeah, that's what I thought. And then I'm, now I'm like, fuck, I'm such an idiot that I thought it was cringe. Yeah. I mean, because to be it, fair- it was, it was like looked down upon yeah, was, in, in the anime community. Cause we had like the whole, mm. the whole like weeaboo movement well, where- people, people will then start like, trying to talk Japanese to you online. And it's like, yeah. oh, what are you doing? This is cringe. Yeah. Like, you know, they're not really trying to learn the language. They're just trying to learn a couple of phrases. They just wanted to, to be like, the, yeah. they just wanted to be the, like their favorite anime characters. And people yeah. were just because, like- Because let's be real, like the Japanese you hear in anime, like 99% of the time is not the way Japanese people speak. That's why you can't learn from it. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I think you can learn from it, but you shouldn't completely no, base all of your knowledge off it. It's a different it. level. It's yeah. once you've yeah. already got your base. Yeah, yeah. I, You can I, talk about slaying dragons. And yeah, I would also say that watching anime with subtitles is a wholly different experience from watching anime to learn it because mm, yes. I've I've realized this now as I'm trying to learn Japanese that the subtitles are just distracting. <laughs> they yeah, actually yeah, I, yeah. I think it's actually worse to learn Japanese with si subtitles on because you either pay attention to the Japanese or you read the subtitles and mm. it's really hard to concentrate on doing both. And your mind your mind works differently when it's just trying to hear the language mm. as opposed to just reading the subtitles. I, I think actually having the Japanese subtitles on helps more. Yeah, I would like, say I can so at least as well. See the sentence. What I reckon, I reckon I some kanji. And stuff. I reckon. I reckon you get a sentence. You watch it and you listen, then you stop and you go back and you play it again and you read. Yeah, and yeah but the, but the average listen. anime watch is not going to do that. Yeah, because they just want to listen to the story. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you got to study. Yeah, right, because right. because the trade off you have to do if you want to learn Japanese by watching anime is just to not enjoy the anime. Yes, right. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> which is which is yes, the unfortunate yes. part of it, and yep. it's what I realized yeah, as well. Like, do I want to ruin this thing? Mm. Yeah, is it one of the last time. escapes I have. So, so I guess the only like solace to that is just like use an anime that you already know inside and out. Yeah, yes. and then rewatch it again to be like, all right, I already yeah. know the story. I'm just going to use it as like study material. That's yeah. a good idea, and yeah. you can take like foreign movies that have been dubbed as well. That's another yeah. good strategy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. 
What anime are you flogs watching? <laughs> Well, they, they know what we're watching. Yeah. What, are, what are you yeah, watching? What are you watching? We never got to that. Yeah. So, um, what, what's your favorite anime? Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, hang on. Which one of those sentences am I what, Okay, first? what's your favorite anime? Bacano. Nice. Yeah. That's a good High choice. five. That's good taste. That's, that's, a, really, good taste. that's a really that's good, good taste. taste. Why are you on a show called Trash Taste with yeah. that great taste? <laughs> <laughs> I dubbed Bacano. Well, I was, when I lived in Hong Kong, one of my yeah. jobs there was I was a dubber, so we dubbed anime. Well, you're the Hong one of the Hong Kong voices yeah. in Bacana. <laughs> back, yes. What the? There was a main, one of the main kids. What uh, the fuck? Young, <laughs> young handsome guy, Freel or something was his name. Uh, Freel, that sounds really familiar. Like one of those Scar? kids. No, it wasn't Scarboy. Jacuzzi. Young handsome, not Jacuzzi. It was one of the main kids. Firo. Yes. Okay. Firo. I'm Firo. I'm the old Russian man who was doing all the reincarnation stuff. No fucking stuff. way. Really? Like, sk Can I have a look at your yeah. resume? <laughs> Is this, like, just, yeah, just, is this just, on like just an some, IMDb somewhere? Does someone, Oi, does someone just, did you just give someone a resume? Lady Beard a is like a fucking anime thing. dub voice Lady actor. Beard. What the hell haven't you done? Lady Beard, I was- um, This is so, so insane. We did, we Sounds did like the bullshit. English, we did the English dubs for Animax. So like, right. say you're in Hong Kong or Singapore or something, yeah. you can watch Animax in three languages. Japanese, right. yeah. local language, so like Cantonese and yeah. Hong Kong, yeah. or English. So but we did the English dubs for Asia on Animax. Yeah, so that wouldn't be the English dub that played. No, not on the DVD in America. No, yeah. it's amazing going to conventions and talking to American dubbers. Cause they're like, yeah, one episode, we take about five weeks to dub it. We were like, we did six episodes a day. <laughs> <laughs> Get them done. Get them I done. Mean, I, I, have, I have seen clips from a lot of the show, the English dubs for the Animax. Asian market. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're uh, <laughs> they yeah. have time to mess around. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so I was, um, I was uh, Tomozo in Chibi Maruko-chan. Really? I was Nezumi Otoko in- uh, uh, Gigi no Gigi no This is fucking insane. I was this Grell so in Black Butler. <laughs> You're Grell in Black Butler? <laughs> I'm Grell. I'm bloody Grell. <laughs> That's I so was, funny, um, what's going on? If, if for Chinese <laughs> listeners in uh, Pleasant Goat and Big Big Wolf, I was the wolf. Right. You, did it in uh, you know that show? You did it in Chinese? Okay. No, we dubbed into English. But the oh, original okay. show is Chinese. It's Chinese. Oh, big, right, time, right. big time in China. Big right, right, right. Um, we did tons of it in, uh, we did Gundam Age. I was the um, flirty dude in Gundam Age. <laughs> Can't remember his name. Gundam Sangokuden. You must have already been one. bashing these out. Yeah, like, Jesus fuck, Christ. What the fuck I did, I just turn up. <laughs> you do, you do. You show up, what is it? All right, the thing, okay. All right, <laughs> <Just> knock him <them> out. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, so you turned, did you even know who you, who you were playing, what the characters were, or did you just turn up and there was a script there and you just had to read Normally the at the start of the series, you, we'd get to do a little bit of research. Mm. Right. And we get told, okay, here's approximately what happens in the story. Here's approximately who your character is. Right. And yeah. then we figure out the voice. We sit there with the director and we figure out the voice we're gonna do. Right. No, no, okay, audition cool. uh, no audition process? No. <laughs> <laughs> audition was to get hired by the studio. Right, <laughs> so right, So you've been right. hired and now you are they good enough to do mm. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but then we did like Inazuma 11, right? Yeah. Because there's so many characters in that show. Yeah. Right. Everybody has like a hundred characters. So you kind of, <laughs> you run out of voices, right? The soccer teams, because they rotate through and right. you team every few episodes. You just, your team from three episodes ago starts, their voices become the new team's voices. You're like, you're you like forced, have... everyone's forced to be Mel Brooks, yeah. basically. Yeah, it's just yeah, like, let's yeah. do a hundred voices. Big let's time. just pull them out. Big time. That was a great job, but that was wiped out the financial crisis, you see. Oh, Jesus. So I had a killer life before then. Mm. Stunt man, voice actor, act was dope. I can't believe you're an anime dog voice. You know, yeah, they, they say like the jack of all trades. So you're literally you the embodiment. Up, yeah. You know, Omni Productions? The oh, intro. they have the funniest Transformers dub. You have yes, to really? Have this. That's what it's they're notorious for. Because this Transformers dub is fucking awful. <laughs> it is That's what I'm so is, is this bad. the same company that dubs Dragon Ball Z movies? And uh, like- I think there is, it might be, but yeah, Omni, Omni Dubs is like- Yeah, that was what they were notorious the for. Yeah, right, right, right. There's, a, there's, a, there's a like Twitter accounts dedicated to just posting clips from it, <laughs> like, just out of context. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to the headmasters? Can't they fight without Chrome Dome? Um, so we, I just showed the boys some of the Transformers dubs. Yeah. And um, <laughs> that it's was, hilarious. That was before my time at the company. Yeah, Did the quality actually go up? You know? <laughs> Don't know. Depends on what you think. <laughs> okay, you say, I, okay, listen, I, when, when I'm doing voice acting, right? I know when I'm in a project that's garbage, right? Of course, because you're a voice actor too, yes. Yes, I know when I'm in something that I'm like, this is not good on the resume. Okay. You know what I mean? You right, can tell. Right, right, right. Okay. Did, you, did you get that feeling when you're doing any of these dumps? Or you're like, this is like, this is okay. Or this is like, no, I don't think this is good. Or you just like, it's just work. 
Well, you know, it's like uh, maybe sometimes, yeah. but um, you got to do what you got to do. I mean, I guess the yeah, fact true. that we just found out that you yeah. there used to be an anime dub yeah. voice actor says something, right? Yeah, but like, uh, look, there's dubbing and there's dubbing. There's kind of stuff that you get sent to do, and it's some, you know commercial thing and you know yeah. the script is written in broken english and you're just like no Fuck. you just you just record okay and you just do it and right, then right. there's shows like black butler which were actual shows right right yeah, you yeah. know so there's dubbing the stemming tell me about your um voice acting life just started when i was uh oh my god how old was i 15 oh my smokes from in like my room though like just doing it for fun because i loved it well just doing like fan dubs yeah just doing like anything oh, and then okay Went to uh, start doing that for a while. Got better equipment. Had zero training for a while, uh, and then managed to get some roles. Like very luckily, um, oh. oh my god! One of the most embarrassing ones is that I voiced like I couldn't do this now. I think you got you know what I'm gonna tell. <laughs> no, exactly. You're, you're gonna fucking lo love this. So I voiced a Nigerian. Oh dear! You can't <laughs> do that. I can't yeah. do that now. So what happened was is that. Again, I was like, I was like seventeen when I did this. It was like Age of Empires. It's like, you, I'm sure you know that game. Yeah. yeah, they literally were doing a competition where I was like, you can voice in the game. And I was like, yeah. fantastic. Wow. And so they, they it's a big wanted, IP, right? Yeah. So yeah. they wanted Nigerian accents, and so <laughs> I, I quickly open up Google Tab, go to YouTube, oh. Nigerian accent example. Right. Listen to some guy who's Nigerian speak, and I was like, I'm pretty sure I can get close to this. Wow. <laughs> Submitted an audition, didn't think anything of it. Yeah. A year later, like. Yeah, so um, yeah, we use your lines in the game. And I'm like, can I re-record them? They're like, no, no, they're, they're, they're in the game. It's out the game, now. The game oh, came out yesterday. It's out now. I'm like, what? That's amazing. <laughs> but I didn't like sign any contracts or anything. So I don't know if like- just, Did you get paid That's for cool. it or? Yeah. Uh, they paid me like 200 bucks. I'm like, thanks. Pat me on the back, like get them out of here. Right, right, like, right. I was gonna say, that's called getting it done. Yeah, for yeah, free. yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. But like, Jesus. it was like so long in between, you know, when I set, you know, I took- Is that legal? I don't can, can, can they just uh, use your I, voice without you signing hey, it's anything? It's a competition. He's, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty right. sure when you send in the competition, they, you know, they have a The fine yeah, print yeah. probably Legally says something, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's amazing. So you got into League of Legends as a Nigerian. No, sorry, no, uh, um, Age, Age, Age of Empires. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if, if Ryan IP Games was doing this. IP infringement, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I mean, Riot Games did redub one of the They both have alliteration in the title. You can't blame me that much. And it. It was weird because, like, I, you know, <laughs> I, Sorry, you got I'm voicing some archer in some DLC that like never wow. appears, and my mate is obsessed with Age of Empires. Right. Wow. And he, he just messaged me one day. He's like, "I think I found you," and he sends me an unlisted YouTube clip, and it's like, you know, because you know Age of Empires when you're moving around the wall, it's like right, a dark right, circle right. that comes visible, yeah. and there's the Nigerian archer walks in, and he's like, "Hello." And welcome to the village. <laughs> like, it's, literally, it's literally like the Ugandan Knuckles meme right, right, right. before the meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I, I've shown clips of it before because I just think it's so fucking embarrassing and stupid. Oh, that's that it, not PC. No, there's no way I, you could get away with that today. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. as, as questionable it was, but even in like 2015, that was that. There was like still no problem with that. Right, like, right. Yeah, and that, that internet was, was a there different was time. Never yeah, yeah. about that being even problematic. Time and like now, changed, I would never dream man. of auditioning for a Nigerian. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're also 17. Yeah, I was, like, I was like yeah. a, a literal fucking child. I yeah. thought I can be a Nigerian archer. <laughs> when Listen. I first did my um, like actor registry stuff in Australia, mm. you have to list accents you can do. Right. And I went through the ones I you thought just I could You just yeah. bullshit. Yeah, because you want you know, French or whatever. Yeah. But then it comes over like, Korean, yeah, just do an impersonation of my Taekwondo master, tick. Yeah. Japanese, ah, just do an impersonation of my friend Yuji, tick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Languages I would never, ever, ever need to freaking right. voice. And right. then, like, uh, so I was doing that and then yeah, I just came into a thing and started doing classes, got workshops, got more experience, did professional work in London for a while. It was pretty, yeah, it's pretty chill. In London? Yeah, London. So now, was was your, are you voice acting here? Uh, I have done some things here. Uh, I think that we talk, uh, the one thing we did, I can't talk about yet. So yeah, 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 Connor and I did something recently, but we can't talk about it yet. The game's I don't think it's been recently. I remember you guys talking about this. Ago. It was ages, ages ago, ago, but it still hasn't uh, been released. Yeah, yeah, so. really? mm. yeah that you, happens a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I shot a thing in 2016 that came out like a few weeks you ago. You just, I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. Jesus I mean, Christ. I feel like what you do is you just record these things and then it's a pleasant surprise like two, three years just later when, about when it. it comes out. It's like, like, oh yeah, yeah I, I did that. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh God, I want to redo <laughs> all my lines. That, oh fuck, I sucked. <laughs> Let's hope the world hasn't changed around you too much in the time. Yeah, I hope not. You're not breaking any hey laws guys, by uh, accident. Hey guys, my newest uh, Nigerian role. <laughs> <laughs> I, I recorded that seven years ago. <laughs> hope you like it. Today on The Voice, of Iflika 
your radio <laughs> network. We need to be doing noise. You need to get voice did, actor, Connor. <laughs> did, did you did you have to do like an Afrikaans accent? Or did you have to like ever put on an accent for any of the anime voices you had to do? All the time. All the time? All the time. His, yeah, his because I can't really imagine like an Australian accent. You know, no. The problem, <laughs> the problem with really accents is that you always think you're better at doing them than you actually yeah. are. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, even if you're very good, a native will be able to pick it apart and they'll be like- Yeah, That's yeah because when I did the, when I did the, I did a voice for Pop Team Epic, but like the character was- um, American. An American. Like, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it was the mayor of New York, right? In the story. Pretty truly awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it was literally the mayor of New York. And I was like, and I said to the director, I was in Japanese. I was like, so do I have to like do it in an American accent? Like I can do an American accent, but it's not great. Like, I'm just letting you yeah. know. And he's like, no, I just fucking say it, eh? And I'm like, all right. So I was like, so I was like, okay, I need to see like yeah. how far the limit is, right? Because yeah, yeah. usually they don't take the first take, right? Yeah. So I, I can just kind of test the limits to see like how far I can go uh, before I have to eventually redo it again. So my first take was dead. I was like, I'm the mayor of New York <laughs> and uh, yeah, welcome everybody. And they fucking took it. Well, cause they, 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 know. <laughs> they don't know. Yeah, yeah, because they don't know. They were like, yeah, that sounded really New York. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> no, 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 no. When I was, uh, when I thought I was better than I was, you know, you always, you always listed all these accents and I yeah. very quickly started dropping to like less and less. Yeah. <laughs> Even now I, I could definitely do an American speaking role, but mm. I just don't want to cause I'm scared of getting rinsed by Americans. Uh, right, exactly. So I'll only do it if I'm like, I'm. 100% sure I can pull this off. Yeah, right. But even then I'm like, I, I, I don't I mean, there, there's a lot of actors out there who are so good at doing an American accent, but for some reason, like when it's the other way around, the, like- it, Yeah, true, true. Yeah, Americans doing British. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, right, is that it's, when you're in this really contained environment where you get the script before, you can really sit down and nail the accent in these words. You can go with it. You can sit down with a native speaker. You can be like, walk me through exactly how to pronounce this. Mm, yeah. Because And then people on the spot are like, do an American accent. It's a totally different thing. Yeah. Like, if you coach me, I can definitely perform an American accent or probably even like other European accents if you gave yeah. me time to do that one line. Yeah. yeah. And that's why like, I think actors, it comes off like that. I mean, some of them can are talented as fuck and just whip it out and just right. keep yeah. doing it. But, and they, but they have like linguist coach. Yeah, but that's when you have like, like an accent it. inside of you, right? Yeah, you can yeah, just it's, like, it's, 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 it's it's really difficult yeah. to like actually just on the fly switch to an accent because you're rewriting and it sounds like convincing. the whole coding yeah. of the language. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you a voice actor too? I am. I'm the odd one out here. I've not done any voice acting. Uh, well, that, that was how I got my start doing yeah. all my, everything that I did. Yeah. You should have a crack. You should do what he did. Then you could be a voice actor too. <laughs> no. you could do it. No? You could do I'm it. not a good voice actor. I mean, I mean, uh, Gan's voice acted in his own things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, like the problem with me is that there's no way for me not to sound like me. And also I'm shit at doing accents as that, well. That's sometimes good though. Like some people do want like very want distinct- that voice. Vo yeah, yeah, very distinct voices. Like I, I hear, I hear like my voice acting, which is like I've done like, like bare bones voice acting because like I did like, uh, do you know what an abridged series is? I think so. Right yeah. So it's like it's like when you, it's like a parody dub kind of yeah, of, right. of yes, an anime series, right? Yep. And so I did I did that for fun, and I would like cast all the main roles as like other voice actors. Um, and I would cast myself as just all the filler characters that I, I couldn't see. be bo bothered to look for. Right, and right. I just sound like myself in every character. Listen, <laughs> it, it's, it's either that or generic American accent, like 101 that like no one can- Right, right. From someone like else. I can wreck it. Like anytime I used to watch like a giga abridged, like I could immediately tell. Oh, yeah, oh, you yeah, can tell gone. when it's yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. It's right? so obvious when it's gone. <laughs> but like, it's but, gone, that has it, a, but that has a charm to it, I find. <laughs> Where it's like, it's like, it's like that, it's like, you know, watching something and then all of a sudden you hear your favorite voice actor, mm. right? Being like, oh shit, there he is. <laughs> Morgan Freeman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So, um, are you? <laughs> I actually am. <laughs> Pull my skin off. Um, what are your favorite animes? Oh my god! Here we go. It's oh, the Jesus. question. Yeah, that is the question we get asked all the time. But you know what? It's the Hong Kong back in a dub. I must. Admit. <laughs> saying, saying your favorite is a little bit fourteen-year-old. So yeah, can I rephrase the question? What are you watching at the moment, Joey? At the moment, yeah. uh, I just caught up on Attack on Titan. Okay, it's so it's the whole damn thing. Well, I mean, what it's up to currently. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, because okay. for are you the watching Attack, are you on, watching Titan? Attack on Titan? Uh, no, I watched through series one. I haven't watched it since then. You're doing oh. a yeah. disservice. Yeah. It gets I a lot been, better. It just gets better. Yeah. Does it really? Yeah, yeah. it just okay. gets better. Because I started series two and there was a lot of talking and not much yeah. happening. So I was a bit like, oh, Season two is like, they throw in a lot of politics into yeah. the story. Oh, man, and and it seems boring at first. No, no, trust me. I think I think everyone was at that point. Season two came out. watching Peppa Pig and they put the fucking politics in. 
Don't get me started. Don't get me started. <laughs> no, but like, I think everyone was at that point when season two started. They were like, oh God, like, where's the action? Where's the high octane action everyone yeah. came for for season one? But then after a while, you quickly start to realize, oh, this is very important to the story. Engage, yeah. and, it, and it just gets you more invested yeah. it, in it, that world. It, ma it makes the world more and more interesting as you go along. Yeah, okay. So by the time you get to season four, it's got the same action packed kind of roller coaster ride, but then you also- but The stakes are so much higher Yeah, the now. stakes are like way higher. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> so what, what season are they up to now? So four. it's currently up to four. It feels four. like a conversation with my dad. I'm <laughs> like, no, dad, it's, so it's just anime. It's great. It's, yeah. Oi, nah. Oi, oi. <laughs> Calm down, young Connor. Calm down. So what, what is the last anime that Connor, you watched? Reached, you know what you, you need to stop doing, Connor? Stop watching anime and read a good book. <laughs> Kids these days, they watch I'm, too much anime. I'm one of, now I do not want for a second want to take away from the seriousness of the health crisis of COVID-19. But one of the advantages of this pandemic has been been a lot of time at home yeah. yes. to do things such as catch up on anime. Mm -hmm. yes. So I've been catching up on Agretzko. Oh, ah. Gretzko's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, Ken Ganashira. I haven't seen King. You should watch Baki. Oh, Have Please you seen Baki? Baki? Please watch Everyone Baki. Everyone keeps telling me to watch Baki. Uh, I started uh, watching I mean, Baki. You're a martial artist. Like yeah. you should love Baki. I, I do you watch? Didn't get into it at the start for keep some going, reason. Keep, okay, going, keep, keep going, going, keep going, keep going. Okay. I somehow uh, here's, here's, here's a more, here's a more important question. Do you watch Jojo? Uh, oh. I don't. Oh. Oh. You would, oh, no. you would, you, I would absolutely adore You are literally Jojo. a Jojo's yeah. character. You are, yeah. you are yeah. a Jojo you, you, character. You, 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 you. Why have I not been put in this anime series yet? <laughs> you could have been in the Hong Kong dub for all of <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could have been in the Hong Kong dub for Jojo. <laughs> nah, I haven't, but, I, I've been, but you are now Oh, dude, number okay. number X has told me to watch that. Oh, yeah. you would absolutely love. I mean, it. If you go on the internet, no yeah. you get told to watch. Yeah, it. I yeah. potentially have no choice. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think you'll genuinely love it, and I think with Baki as well. Like, if you give it a little yeah. bit of a chance, I like, think. Uh, I, gets, but gets I got better. a feeling the reason I didn't get into Baki was like the DVD was broken. <laughs> <laughs> I got a feeling that's well, no, that's yeah, also, it's also on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Netflix so. yeah, that's why now this excuse doesn't work <laughs> yeah, anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm watching Ken Ganesh today. You watch that? No, I haven't. I just thought that was, no, no, no. I, this is blasphemy to say. Like, I just thought it was like inferior backy. Is that like? <laughs> Did you watch it? You watched the whole thing? I watched like two episodes and I was like, no. It's because of the 3D. I, uh, I don't know. I just I was watching it. And I was just like, every itch was scratched better by backy. Mm. I feel yeah. that main character whose name I can't remember. The little weenie dude who's what? From Baki? No, 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 from King Ganashida. So you uh, don't know because you haven't seen him. Yeah, I don't know, name. yeah. I don't remember. Whoever he is, I look at him and I'm like, I know this man. Just, there are so many <laughs> Japanese men who are like that, you know? Oh, really? Just like, little. <laughs> 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 I wish I was awesome. <laughs> 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 Look at these awesome men. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was one. You know? And therefore, I think I have a personal. God, I hate it when I'm on the train and someone's just choking. <laughs> <laughs> How awesome I am. You know what I'm saying? No, we don't. <laughs> we, not gonna lie, we don't. No. I feel that something like that mm. has a certain uh, essence of Japanese-ness in it. And there are so many people in this country mm. who have been forced into a profession or a series of activities that they are not into. Right, And right. they just yearn to be a different person. Right. And then yeah. they, there's, they'll be, whatever they are the otaku for, yeah. mm -hmm. pro wrestling or anime or idols, whatever it is, mm. it's like they get to totally embrace yeah. their fantasy. Yeah. Mm. So to that end, Ken Ganashida actually, despite the ridiculousness of it, feels yeah. quite real to me. Right. Mm. Okay. And yeah. I think I appreciate it now because I've lived in Japan for a long time. You're really like, selling well, yeah, well, King well, yeah, yeah, right well, now. now. I feel bad for calling it. <laughs> you know what? You should. <laughs> you should, my friend. I'll give it another shot. Do it. Give it our shot right now. Yeah. What do I, have you? <laughs> so you said you watched the Gretzko. Have you caught up to season three? Uh, no, not yet. See, I'm getting through them, you see. Okay. Mm. I, I would be like very it's... interested to see what your opinion of season three yeah. is. Yeah. Well, now yeah. I have yeah. no, now Actually, I need to yeah, back. yeah. yeah. Now You're right. Like, any, any, like, I, don't, I don't want to spoil you, but uh, let's say- The parallels are the parallel, astonishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have hey, what? The parallels between that and King Ganesha? No, 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 the no, parallels no. Between, between season between, three and you. Yeah. All right. All right. I can't yeah. Wait. I, yeah, I'll be interested. I'll be interested to see. Well, I'll watch the rest of our score. You mm. watch Kengon Ashida. We'll come no. back and do another okay. podcast. No, here's the yeah. thing. I've always wanted to. I've just hadn't had the time to like sit down and watch it. So, so now it was my understanding that you watched literally every anime. <laughs> no, actually. Okay. Well, in that case, my understanding was incorrect. Yeah. So Wait, where did you get that understanding from? Where did you was get that understanding? Was it from my name? Anime man. <laughs> yeah, and I, I remember when I first met you, I remember you being like, yeah, I watched, I watched every, every anime. anime and I well, yeah, that was- <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that was also during, wow, well, way to out me out like that. That was also, <laughs> sorry, 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 I'm sorry. No, 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 but like, I think because when I did meet you, it was like, what, 2015, 2016, right? Back then I literally did watch everything, but okay. that's because that was also the time when I also wasn't as busy as I was now. Okay. Like, I think the one reason I just can't anymore is because I just have so much shit going and on. And I was wondering how you managed to maintain mm. that level of sitting on a couch when right. you're doing so many things. Right. Like, oh, by the way, I watched the video of you guys riding bicycles across Japan. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, God. It's very clear to me oh, you don't God. spend very much time <laughs> in the gym. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> it was wonderful. It was wonderful. It was a masterpiece. Um, but no, I was wondering how you managed to keep up that mm. level of consumption when your output was so great. This is- He doesn't. Oh, I don't. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't. Now, this is interesting. Uh -huh. I think one of the interesting things about becoming content mm. is the lifestyle that is required to be content mm. is the opposite of the lifestyle required to consume content. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. I'd and agree I think, with that. And I think the best way, the best like uh, metaphor, I guess, for it, mm. is you think about professional sports, mm. the lifestyle of the guys on the field mm. is the polar opposite from the lifestyle of the people in the stands. Mm. Yeah. Even the stands with their beer and their hot dogs, swearing, yeah. swearing and screaming. Yeah. Guys in the field getting up at 5 a.m. and doing sprints. Right, right. Nothing but salad. I feel that's the same way when you're doing content. Because, like you say, what you got into it mm. as a consumer, mm. you then become the content. Right. And now you are to be consumed. And that's the problem, right? And, and that's, I Sorry. guess, the dilemma, oh, oh right? Gosh. Well, I mean, exactly. But, like, that's also just the dilemma of being an anime content creator, right? It's like, I need to watch anime to create content, but because I'm too busy creating content, I don't have time to watch anime. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the yeah. catch 22. It's the catch 22, exactly. Yeah. And I've just been trying so hard to, I guess, like just try and keep up as much as possible, but without having to go down to like a video every two months. Mm. All right, so it's just like- Call me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you're getting way better at it recently. Better. Yeah, getting you're getting better. way better, getting better recently, better. right? Like we're all- you a bit slow with your uploads? No, I mean, like I, my upload schedule is like way longer than either of these two. Mm. But uh, I mean, that's because- But he also like jam packs like a lot more into one video. I was gonna yeah. say, your videos are quite long, aren't they? Yeah, and they're all scripted as well, where these two just turn on a camera and just start just talking. Talking shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally, yeah. Yeah, I remember the first time I helped, I think Joey record one of his videos and we recorded like a tier list. Oh yeah. And uh, he turned on the camera, we just started talking for an hour and a half, turns it off and he goes, all right, done. My work here is done. I'm just like, what? That was a video? <laughs> so, yeah, just send it to my editor now, we're good. What? <laughs> those, are the rare, those are the rare instances where you're like, this is just amazing because I got one of my weekly uploads done in an hour yeah. and it required no planning. But then right. other times it's like, I have to set up so many fucking things. To yeah, 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 yeah. Done. It's like, I got to go to X so time with X yeah. person, yeah. film yeah. this, blah, blah, blah. Permission, it's yeah. an absolute nightmare sometimes. Um, so how did this transition happen from doing anime content into your going out into the world and doing interesting Japan things? content. I, I think, I don't know. I don't know about you, Jerry, but yeah. I, I never wanted to be stuck in my room doing stuff, but mm. it's like, it's the means that you have at that time, right? right? It's like when I was creating content, I always envisioned something bigger that was, you know, it, more involved with me doing stuff mm. and I mean, moving to Japan and having yeah, the agency help was pretty much the key to allowing me to do that. I think, I think for me, it was more so because, you know, I have the problem with my name being the anime man. People just expect me to just be mm. every video I'm in my room talking about anime. So I always, cause I always had like so many ideas to do other things that no matter how much I thought about it, I was like, there's no way I can twist anime into this. Mm. So I might as well just not make it. Mm. But then this year, especially I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. Like if I enjoy it and it just seems interesting enough and I can, you know, have a fun time doing it, then I'm just gonna make it. It's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that drifting video you did was freaking cool. Yeah, great oh, thank video. you very much. Yeah. I watched that drifting video. I was I, like, mm, I wanna go drift. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's you really should. fun. It's, it's yeah. expensive. Yeah. It's, it's really expensive. It's yeah. very expensive. Like but, beyond, uh, beyond your Shinkansen, it's expensive. Like the drifting itself. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Alexi, who uh, we had on as a guest, he's like a professional drifter. Yeah. But like, yeah, he said like, it's one of the most expensive hobbies out there. Yeah. Oh, I mean, really it, you're basically tearing apart a car. Yeah. 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 You, you need a car. Yeah, you need a car. But like we were able to like rent cars. But most of the time, if you want to drift, you have to buy a car. So they didn't because they expect you if because they expect that car to be just totaled by the end of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you buy a car and it just sits in that parking lot, and yeah. you can use it whenever you want. And then you got to replace the tires. Of like yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And I imagine there's safety standards that have to be maintained, like a beast. Yeah. Uh, uh, surprisingly, really? <laughs> not seatbelt regulations. <laughs> and things. I think mean, safety is like it's up to you. You know. How yeah. Really? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if that I could be completely wrong. And say, yeah. Oh, I, I, mean, I kind of got that vibe. I mean, I got like, the vibe you know, when 
you didn't even need a driving license to oh, yeah. be able yeah, to go on the drip it's, track. It's, it's private property, so yeah. you can. Ah. Yeah, it's like driving in someone's yeah, backyard, Grant, right? Grant doesn't yeah. have a license yeah. to drive, and Jerry doesn't have a license to drive. Oh, I do have a yeah. license to drive. You've got no license. license. Yeah, For real, I do. <laughs> right. So they, they turned. We were, we booked this thing, and I remember there was a big concern. We were like, wait. These two, these two don't have licenses. What are we gonna do? Yeah, because wow. we thought we needed like a manual license, and Gun and I don't. We only yeah. have an automatic license. Oh no, Gun can drive manual, right? Yeah, I can. Yeah, drive. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I just I, haven't done in years. Yeah, I, I don't have a manual license, so yeah. I was like, well, I'm gonna be screwed. And yeah, the guy was right. like, no, you don't need it. Just jump in. You're fine. Yeah, just learn. You're fine. So I had to learn, learn. manual like on the spot. Very funny. <laughs> it, was very funny. it was horrible. Fine. It was very funny. Yeah. Um, God. When I learned manual, it was for a movie I shot in the Philippines. Right. And um, okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the tangent. Here comes the tangent. For, wait, wait, for fuck's sake. Oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. In front wait. of my, my South African cut. <laughs> wait, you, okay, wait, and wait. I learned how to drive manual. <laughs> I briefly lived in the Philippines. Okay. And okay. I worked for a movie studio. Right. And I was a producer and an actor. And so I was acting in a particular film. What haven't you done? Uh, I literally asked you like half an hour ago, is there any other like job well, that you when, haven't mentioned yet? When did you go undercover in a gang you know, and bust the drug raid? I'm curious, can you tell me about Here's that? Interestingly, that's why I'm on this podcast. <laughs> to bust the anime man, so listen anime trade. Um, Jesus. Uh, so the way I learned manuals, I had to learn it for this movie and I'm not a stunt driver. I'd never done stunts in cars ever. Mm, okay. And they're like, yeah, yeah, so that's the car. And we'd get this guy who will teach you how to drive a manual. I've mm. never driven manual. Keep in mind, it's also on the wrong side of the road from Australia. So right, the steering right. wheel's on the other side of the car. Mm. So I'm there and I spend a few days clickety clacking, bunny hopping away, learn how to do it. And then in the movie, the scene that I have to shoot with me in the car is like dirt track in this dodgy like countryside Philippines. Yeah. Right. It's like, through the middle of like a rice paddy. So it's like, there's the road and then like a drop on either side. Right, right. And I have to like come around this corner, speed it up, get up to like 60 or something, yeah. going directly at the camera crew. Right. And then they're gonna pull back on the dolly and at the last second I have to go boo boo and like whiz around them. Jesus Christ. And I'm like, you want a, a non-stunt driver to do that? You really want a non-stunt yeah, driver to do that? Did you uh, have sure. to sign any health and safety stuff or? <laughs> Philippines? <laughs> <laughs> you know, nothing happens in Japan. And you think in the Philippines is going to be a health and safety disclaimer? <laughs> Bros, so, so we go for it. And I'm sitting there before the first take and I'm like, well, Rip cameraman. Vehicular <laughs> manslaughter. How, how, how long is that? I'm prison? having an adventure, if nothing else. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> so, but what would happen is this camera crew, as they pulled out on their dolly, one of the guys would jump out onto the road to pull the freaking camera. Didn't tell me he would do that. Right, right. So, okay, your directions there. You speed up, get to 60, then on the last second, just whiz around him. Right. So, no, okay. no rehearsals? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up 60 at this guy, okay? Getting there, freaking out a little bit. Do my zing to get around him. And then a man jumps in front of the car. <laughs> no! Jesus, Jesus Christ. Did you hit him? Uh, <laughs> Did you kill him? <laughs> <laughs> I think fine, finally I didn't, but, I, but then in another take on, a oh, homeless man jumped onto the road. <laughs> oh my God. Out of the rice paddy, onto the road. <laughs> What, what the, the fuck? fuck? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh. You have lived like the experience of like ten different lives yeah. at least. It's fucking crazy. Oh, it's ridiculous! Oh my god! Yeah. I Been just want to sit in front of a fire with a cup of tea. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> after the, the very it, interesting, yeah, yeah, after yeah. the interesting talks you've told us, oh. Jesus Christ! But uh, I guess uh, to oh, yeah. wrap things up, yep. like. Where do you want our viewers to go check your go stuff out? Go check out Ladybeard on the social medias. Ladybeard, that's one word, underscore Japan. Ladybeard underscore Japan <laughs> on the twippy twoppy and the facey bookie and the Instagram and the old ticking talking. And don't forget to check, check out Ladybeard's new group, Baby Beard, coming at you at all those same places. 2021, prepare yourself world. It's on like Donkey Mother Loving Kong. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I love the G rating self censoring. <laughs> as the G rating. That's the G rating the right Donkey there. Donkey Kong loves his mama. <laughs> <laughs> So um, yeah, I would like to say a huge thank you mm. to you members of the Rubbish Rebel podcast Ooh, for having me gross. on your establishment no, 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 no. here today. No, thank no. you for having us on your podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this might as well have you been your podcast. <laughs> no, no, yeah. to come back. Yeah. Um, when you see the comparison between your subscribers and mine, you will quickly realize it's your podcast. <laughs>
<laughs> um, I'd like to thank you, gentlemen, sincerely. It's wonderful to have yeah. this conversation. Oh, thank you. No, it's been great. I'd like you. to thank our behind the scenes crew. Let's just have a round of applause for, <laughs> for our behind the scenes crew. They've done an excellent job. And lastly, I'd like to thank you, the viewers of Trash Taste Podcast. Without you, this show. We don't have to do anything. Yeah, yeah. we don't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah, to do anything. <laughs> Without you, this show isn't possible. So, you hey. Gotta, you got to thank the patrons. You yeah. got to thank the patrons. Yeah, you got to thank the patrons. Yeah, we got patrons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, let's say we like it's my show. Yeah, Thank so the like, patrons. I'd like to thank our patrons. Their names, <laughs> their names coming yeah. up. Yeah, there you go. You got it. You got it. There you go. Don't uh, forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And oh, uh, shout like. out the Twitter and subreddit. Ah, uh, what? We have a Twitter and a subreddit. Ah, oh, shout out to your Twitter and your subreddit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we have a Spotify as well. Spotify. Yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. Tell people Spotify. Spotify. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe <laughs> to the Trash Taste Podcast on Spotify. There you go. You got there it. Go. There I'm go. Lady Beard, and I'll see you next time. You <laughs> 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 just did our job for us. Like, I, 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 I guess, I guess that's it. Bye, guys. All right, bye. 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 <laughs>